What's going on, guys? I'm Flint Masters, and I'm so, so excited to be hosting Podcast 2 of the Survivor YouTuber Season Rankings. I'm once again joined by my co-host, who did an amazing job last week of actually hosting, so I have uh, quite a lot to live up to this week. What's up, Russell Muscle TV? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm excited to not be hosting this week and actually talk about the seasons of Survivor live with all the best Survivor YouTubers. Flint Masters, no pressure. You're going to do an awesome job this week. A little heads up before we get started, the Survivor buff giveaway, that's not going to be happening this week. Don't worry about that, Flint Masters. Let's introduce everyone else. So speaking of those other YouTubers, we got Adam from the Survivor Buffs. What's going on, Adam? Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk. We got like, I was like just looking over the list one last time. We kind of got like at least one from like every era. We're kind of like some early seasons, mid. We got Survivor 41 to talk about. So kind of all over the board. I'm excited. That's the thing. We have some very ambiguous seasons to talk about, some very controversial seasons to talk about. So I'm sure we'll not run out things mm -hmm. to talk about. And speaking of a man who never somehow never runs out of a Survivor topics to talk about, we got Luke from Idled Out. What's going on, man? Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I'm super excited to be here and talk about the most okayest seasons of Survivor ever. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Okay, that's the thing. It's like some of them can be – some people can have some of these seasons like a top ten maybe. Some of us, we do have some of us in like bottom five. So it really is like really ambiguous seasons. I'm blushing. Um, so, Russ, you kind of talked about last week how you went about rankings. You would kind of remind people about, again, how you go about ranking these seasons. Yeah. So uh, I went down into a little <laughs> dark room, big Excel. I learned Excel over the summer to figure out how to do this. I got all these Survivor YouTubers. I said, give me the best seasons and the worst seasons. Give me the full rankings. And I really left it as an ambiguous of that. Just give me your own rankings. Decide on your own how you want it to be. Once we got that, I gave their best season 42 points, their worst season one point, everything averaged out in the middle. And from that, we get the official Survivor YouTuber season rankings. Yeah. We're going the bottom middle right now, season 31 ranked to season 21 ranked. For me personally, I kind of went a way of how I enjoyed it the first time watching it, but also all these times watching it over and over again now being a Survivor YouTuber. Exactly, exactly. So uh, speaking of that, Adam, how do you go about season rankings? You're more a character person, more a gameplay person, you know, what kind of, what effect the season had on overall? How'd you go about it? Yeah, I tried to stray away from like the impact it had on the game because I really didn't want to have my list just kind of be like early season heavy and put like 41 and 42, especially 42. I didn't want that to be too low. So kind of similar to Russell, I really try to aim for like how I enjoyed it the first view, which is tough for some seasons because I've been watching since like Guatemala. So some seasons I don't fully remember how I viewed them the first time, but um, winners are a big thing on me. Um, yeah. Like cast, the characters, how many I related to. But if there was one thing that like, above all else i uh try to rank my seasons on it's it's like the moments you know like um me myself like i'm a uh i work in like the film industry i'm a film director so like my whole like job and life is just about like making moments on the screen that could be happy moments sad moments like you know oh shit moments um i'm just i'm just about those big moments so all righty that's, that's what i went with and luke we got a big fan of yours what do you how'd you go about ranking the seasons yeah, I um, I mean, I've been watching since day one. So, like, watching it live kind of it is an, an intrinsic part of, like, how I view the show. Um, so, yeah, like, how I felt about watching the season as it aired, uh, the kind of the chatter around it. Um, but I don't think it will come as a surprise to many people who watch my channel that I'm a big, like, character-focused person. So, uh, you know, the... The bigger character moments, the like crazier people, the better for me. Uh, so that's kind of how I went about it. All right. All right. Um, anything else you guys want to say before we get into these rankings? I hope Alrighty. we never see Edge of Extinction until the very last podcast. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, we'll see about I that. I hope we disagree on some things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I like pineapple shirt. I want some reason, beef. Man. I want some. Uh, <laughs> these seasons are ambiguous, guys. Like I said, Jack I want some arguments. Up. I want some arguments in this. Let's, we'll let's get fight, arguments fight all that. that. Yeah, we're going to have beefs on some of these. Chat, you definitely get involved and you call us out and I'll definitely pull up the comments if you, you know, I agree with you. If you disagree with me, I'll try to ignore it. But either way, let's but get on don't pull in. up anything disagreeing with me, please. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So speaking of ambiguous, well, we have a very, very interesting uh, way to start this at number 31. Um, it's probably the most hyped Survivor season of all time, but it's not due to the cast. It's not due to a big theme. It's due to the fact 
She's high too. It's due to the fact that it was the first ever Survivor season that we had to wait over a year for. Drop the four, keep the one. At Survivor, uh, at number thirty-one is Survivor forty-one. Um, so yeah, let's see. Russell had this at twenty-six. I had it as twenty-five. Luke twenty-three. Adam thirty. So we're actually all kind of in a similar range to start with. Um, so Russell, I mean, again, this season was so so hyped. You especially literally started your YouTube channel like within forty days, and you know, counting down all the seasons up until the hype of 41 and you don't watch South Africa, Australian survivor. Um, like I do, and I think Luke do and Adam do. So you were like, I mean, you're hyper at all the time. Right. So do you think like due to the massive hype, the season just had so much expectations and people are more down on it as they are, as opposed to 42 or it's just not a very good season in general. What's your thoughts on survivor 41? Yeah. So I think it's kind of telling how all of us rank this one kind of similar. The people that say it's the worst season of all time, you're crazy. And the people that say it's one of the best of all time, you're also crazy. It's neither, none of the above there. Um, but it's also very uh, true how all the seasons kind of following a super hype season. Maybe it's uh, Heroes versus Villains, Nicaragua, or Cambodia. After that, Korong. Like any of these seasons that the community is super, super high on, me especially, my hype gets super high. I can't control my hype. When I get super excited for things, it's just going to be through the roof. And most of the time, our expectations might not be met. And that's kind of what happened with Survivor 41. There's also maybe a little too many twists that Mr. Jeff the Monster threw in at us. Yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit, which is why it's a little lower than people like to expect. But hey, Survivor 43, I hear it's getting rid of some of those. That's good. But mm -hmm. I think it's kind of telling how all of us ranked it very similar. Well, it's perfect segue because Adam worked at the worst. And, you know, speaking of those twists, Adam, I mean, why don't you talk about some of those twists, the do or die twist, the hourglass beware twist, like how big of that had, did it have a ranking your season at number 30? Yeah, it was kind of tough with this season because I kind of like I consider this season what I call like a guinea pig season. And that like this was one of the ones that like clearly was intended to be the start of a new era. I don't know if it kind of landed perfectly, like just after Winners at War, it was like 41 and also the huge break because of COVID. So there was a lot of incentive for Survivor to like try new stuff. Didn't think they were going to try that much new stuff. To be honest, I'm not a fan of pretty much every new thing that they tried um but i do like applaud them for trying because I, I i do like that like the survivor producers mainly jeff just really try to push the show they really don't want it to get stale not just in casting but in like forcing new gameplay stuff because you know especially now that we have like an online survivor community we have like youtube channels talking about strategy everyone is just so like into it now you know like these people that get on the show that like watch idled out or watch peridium that like you know they learn strategy not only from the show but from like youtube and talking to other people so i'm glad that survivor like really tries to update the game so you never know what to expect this season though you know, do or die. Eh, you know, there's a lot of ants for this season with me. Um, hourglass, come on, come on. What was that? What was the hourglass? What? So, pitching? what in your opinion was the worst worst twist of the season? The hourglass, for sure. Yeah, it was that the hourglass. Was, I feel, you had I to feel break like the hourglass. I feel like someone pitched it as a joke, and Jeff was just like, you know, you well, know, maybe. Way of and, yeah. So. Yeah, he had like an hour an hourglass in his office and had like some crazy fever dream that night and had to incorporate right. it like into the season. Uh, That's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah Luke, what are your thoughts about uh, this season? Yeah, it's kind of oops all twists. Uh, they definitely <laughs> went a little far. Um, I think a, another thing that like people are pretty down on is that, uh, yeah, it was like super hyped and Survivor, especially in like the like late 20s and like through the 30s was kind of really focused on like it being like a really fun game um you know the show's like really upbeat and positive a lot of the time and this was kind of a like dour dark season uh i mean ua getting decimated ricard like everyone was playing just like the most cutthroat game possible and it wasn't like as silly as past seasons have been um so I think that's a, a big reason why people aren't like like super high on it too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for those of you that weren't here last week, uh, what Russell did was ask a fire question. He's gonna. So I'm gonna surprise one of these three with a question that they have to answer on the spot. And I also want you, Chat, to get involved. So my first one uh, goes to you, Luke. Um, where do you rank? Where would you rank Erica as a winner? Middle tier, bottom tier, maybe uh... even. 
top 15 like what it's, again she had no edits so like it's one of those yeah i was gonna say it's tough to judge her game uh fully because she was so hidden it's like it's like trying to judge like natalie white's game i guess that's a more extreme case but i mean she was like so buried in the edit and i understand why like the hourglass was supposed to be this like big breakout moment for her like kind of when her edit gets kick-started but it just didn't work i think she's like a pretty like solid middle of the pack winner uh you know she, at the end of the game she turned it on she got rid of all the right people she made sure she was sitting next to the, the you know the two people who wouldn't get votes so uh which is what a lot of people have done in the past and that's what it takes to win so i i cannot get over the i mean okay i i like what they're doing i like that was an obvious winner right but how did she not give her just give her okay she got two confessionals the entire entire pre-merge right just give her two more give her like one more winner confessional and how do we not get anything involving her and Heather the entire pre-merge? Literally, they were the most dominant duo of the entire game. And we do nothing about them. Like, they're in the bottom, top four, and one of those two are going to win. It's insane how they edited their winner like that. And then they wonder why everyone's pissed that Xander didn't win. You know, it's you can't get mad at the cat. You can't even say, oh, you're casual. You know, like, yeah. no, like, I mean, like, if you saw the super fans, like, Edgic broke when Tiffany was eliminated. So, like, because no one thought Erica was going to be a winner. So it is one of those things that I, I cannot get over. And I think that's another reason why Survivor 42 was edited so much better because I don't know if they just didn't like I, Apparently there was a story about Heather. They hated Heather. And since Eric was close to her, you know, they made her invisible too. Maybe they're just trying to surprise us. But, you know, I think that's another big reason why 42 was edited so well. Yeah, well, I mean, I think like Canadians. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, I mean, they gave Marianne a good edit. So, yeah, yeah the editing, I think, is a big problem with this season. Um. But yeah, so I, did, what would you like rank her though, Luke? I know you said like pretty, like maybe middle tier, maybe. I don't. I guess I don't have like a specific okay middle okay. rank or a specific ranking. But yeah, like middle, maybe like slightly under average. Uh, I think yeah. she's perfectly fine. I, she played a good winning game, um, but uh, there's a lot of winners who played a lot better than her, and uh, that's you know. That's just how it is, I guess. And unfortunately, though, I think some people just see her as the bottom five because she like had a bottom five of edit winners edit. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's she's definitely not a bottom five winner. That yeah, is a insane take. Yeah, well, I mean, they're out there, and he, I mean, again, like, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go through any other comments on Survivor Forty One. And did the right? Yeah, I yeah. agree with this. No, this I will say the the um, reading the like Facebook boomers like melting down over yeah. uh, like jeff not saying come on in guys was honestly like the highlight of the season for me uh it's episode over here and that's all anyone talks about we <laughs> yeah uh yeah it was pretty great i i was on there like the next day just like waiting for like the survivor facebook page to update so i could like get my sodium content for the day you know yeah. good take by survivor scholars here erica first woman winner since game changers right and she's invisible you know it's yeah. like what are you doing also big shout out to the survivor scholars who joined us last week guys um, go check them out. You know, they give some good takes. They talk about uh, South Africa, Australian Survivor. Really good knowledge. Go give them a go. Give them a check out. And yeah, any other takes on Survivor Forty One? I mean, Forty One will hold like uh, a little bit of place to my like, close to my heart because it's the first season that me and Gideon like covered live and did exit wow. interviews for. Really? So that was that was uh you know there's always that for for me. But right. um, you know, looking at it from like uh um subjective standpoint like you know hell hella mid as the as the youngins say yeah all right do we think as we get further removed from it people will view it worse or better because people view it pretty bad already yes i think a little better i think I so yeah for sure once they especially, realize you know, especially, especially, when when people, specific, I think. especially when people from the season start returning like i think ricard will probably return i could maybe see uh erica returning especially if it's like a, another all winter season in the future another the third two-time winner, Erica. Yeah. <laughs> Heather definitely is going to come back soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the purple Game track, Changers. Probably. Game yeah. Changers, too. That, honestly, considering the Game Changers cast, wouldn't <laughs> even be crazy. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, oh, man, that, that would have been a perfect segue. But so that is a perfect segue into our next season. I know I kind of gave it away. But, hey, that was literally the perfect segue. <laughs> the most sloppiest, I mean, sloppiest season editing wise is a questionable choice. And many, and many reasons why, I mean, Russell disagrees, but many people, you know, say is like one of the problems with Modern Survivor at number 30 is indeed Survivor Game Changers. 
Um, so let's see. Uh, Russell, again, he was shaking his head. He has his top 10. You can see his face. You know, I think the rest of us three, I had his 31. Uh, Idled Out actually had this in his bottom five at number 38 and Adam 29. So I will start with you, Russell. You obviously agree, disagree with us the most. Why is uh, Game Changers a top 10 season, in your opinion? It changed the game. Like, literally. <laughs> survive. It's called Survivor. It's in the name Survivor Game Changers. Um, Look, I, I, it's maybe more of a, a meme or a joke on my channel now more than anything else, but that's why I had to put it in the top 10. You have a very top-heavy cast. I will admit that. But it gives you a like, really exciting pre-merge taking place. And... The characters, I will admit, the characters you're left with in the post-merge maybe not the most exciting of Game Changers, but fun fact, Roseanne was on the season. But you get some interesting moments taking place. The, obviously, the elephant in the room, the bad moment, the Jeff Varner moment. How is that guy play Survivor three times? That is the stupidest thing ever. One of the most uh, worst casting decisions ever. How he uh, got cast on Survivor three separate times. But I just really remember myself having fun watching the season. That's what Survivor is really all about to me, that first time viewing, watching it. And especially, other than the Varner moment, having fun watching these game changers or not so game changers playing Survivor. Say. Okay. So on the opposite side, Luke, you just don't not even not like the season. This is, in fact, a bottom five season for you under some pretty other terrible seasons. So pretty opposite of Russell. Let him have it. What don't you like about game changers? Yeah, so I will concede that like the pre-merge is like really entertaining uh if if this were if this were like an all newbie season none of these people have played before this would probably be like way higher on my list um because the pre-merge story is pretty fun uh, outside of obviously uh the incident with uh jeff barner um but just the post-merge is confusing it's long watching all the like Good players go out early, it sucks. Uh, I don't know, just the JV squad kind of taken over, you know, uh, after the merge is just, uh, I don't know, it's not exciting. It's so, yeah, it's just, it was like so chaotic, it was almost boring to me as well. Um, That's a good way to put it. So, I mean, Ethan kind of pretty much just says the same yeah, thing right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I totally agree. And I mean, you're Luke. I mean, if you if you're having trouble following the season, imagine what a casual viewer is having trouble following. Yeah, the season. I mean, Michaela, Michaela's vote off is literally the most confusing right. and unexplained of all time, uh, famously. So, yeah, and I mean, I honestly couldn't even tell you right now, like why Zeke or Andrea got voted out. Like, it's all just kind of like a blur, like right. in my brain. Um, so, yeah, yeah. pre-merge is great. Post-merge is uh, nothing. All right. <laughs> so, Adam, I'll do my fire. Before I give you my fire question, do you have any other thoughts about Game Changers? I know you're pretty low on this well. Yeah, you know, if I could change one thing from my ranking, I think I'd put it up uh, a little more higher because, um, <laughs> Luke, I, maybe you caught too much sun this summer or something, but I enjoyed <laughs> I enjoyed post-merge. I thought, I thought the um, – I kind of like it when there's like some there's like that dynamic where there's like two people and it's so clearly one of these two is going to win similar to like ghost islands, even though I, I did put this, I think put this higher than ghost Island, but it was very clear at, at one point after post merge, it was going to be either Sarah or Brad winning and for very different reasons. Mm -hmm. Like Brad obviously was more on like the challenge beast. Uh, Cause he, he tied the record right this season with five. I think that was a season. I believe so. And then I think Sarah played a great uh, strategic game, and then of course Troy Zan, greatest social player of all time. I mean, yeah. you had a you had a trifecta there in the final three. But no, I um I really enjoyed Sarah. I, I think that's another reason why I did like it better than you is I kind of hooked on to Sarah early, and I like never that never happens with me. Like the person I root for never wins. Um, this may have been the first season where that happens. So, um. I think that was part of it too. I was rooting for Sarah pretty hard, but um, I think I'd, if I had to rework my rankings, I feel like I'd place it a little higher just because I've had more time to think okay. about it. But um, yeah, I, I think this is a, a solid season. I had fun. Post-merge, pre-merge, merge. So my fire question, yeah. So my fire question, you and the chat, who in yeah. your opinion is indeed the biggest game changer in survivor history, which player changed the game the most? Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. Don't curse. <laughs> Um, 
Haley Ford's up there. Um, <laughs> if I had to land on yeah, it doesn't have to be on the chest either. Anyone? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I hate I hate to say it because um, I'm, uh, I've worked with them a lot. I don't feel like I'm. I don't want to feel like I'm picking favorites, but I feel like if you had to ask not who the best player is, but who's oh, changed no. the game the most, I feel like you kind of got to go with uh, with Hans in uh, in season. Yeah, that's season that one. one. <laughs> not Francesca. <laughs> She's we got some uh, no. fun yeah. like legit yeah, games. Yeah, this games, Wendy like, Joe erasure. Uh, <laughs> I won't stand. I mean, this on season joke, Cowboy. I mean, did really well. And it's yeah. funny we talk about game changes because we weren't allowed to split the vote that season. Or what? You had to go to revote right away. So, <laughs> uh, Richard Hatch, Rob, Rob Sester Nino. Yeah. yeah, I think the right ones are like Rob or <laughs> you Russell. Said woo. Woo, Honestly, sure. that's a three million dollar decision on his part. Yeah, but in terms of Savari, again, I think you have your obvious ones. Yeah, because there's a lot of good ones here. Sari, I think, is up there. Mm -hmm. Yule, I mean, Yule honestly did save Survivor. <laughs> Um, Melissa, we'll the Fiji last. Melissa, second. yeah, I try to get to all of these. There's some fun. There's like obviously some fun ones, like you know Heather, like we talked about earlier, um, and some serious. But yeah, I mean honestly, I, I'd probably agree with that. Russell Hans. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it is what it, I mean. It's just I kind of agree with you, said Luke. I mean, I'm a little higher on it, but obviously some fun moments. Just way too sloppy. The cast is literally like a joke, like a meme at this point. Um, so even like the rewatch factor, I don't, I can't really get into that much. Um, Sarah's not that. I mean, I love Troy Zan when he was invisible. Sarah and Brad, like, what a boring final two. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, the cast is like, they were like, man, they loved Candace on the Heroes Tribe. Let's put like 10 <laughs> Candaces on. Uh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and of course, I mean, now I talk about like, you know, all the favorites leaving early, and then Cerise, the only one to survive and gets, we all know about Vantage get in, which is like some great big moment, moment though. Guys too. So, Cerise going funny. home. Crazy. Cerise going home. Great moment, though. You can't deny. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess, I mean, it's a big moment, right? But yeah, big moment. Yeah. <laughs> I think Luke has something to say real quick. <laughs> no, I just, I mean, yeah, it's a, I, I, I'm at peace with it. Uh, it okay. was pretty frustrating in the moment um, <laughs> to watch just like oh. this amazing social player go out by, uh, <laughs> I yeah, I can't resist a Candace bash. Right. Um, right. Uh, <laughs> 20 minutes in. Uh, yeah, to see like a really, really good social player go out by like a bunch of uh, advantages was pretty who had like no votes cast against her the whole game i think uh was uh yeah. frustrating but uh i've accepted it uh so all righty any other thoughts about game changers all righty we're good nope all righty so on to number 29 is a very interesting season of survivor i think it kind of does suffer from when it took place it's definitely the most brutal season of Survivor, in my opinion. I think most people would agree. At number 29 is season three, Survivor Africa. Russell's getting ready. So I had this 22, <laughs> Russell 21, Luke 32, and Adam 28. So none of us were super, super high on this season. So, and I do wonder, so I'll start with you, Adam. How mm -hmm. much does old school Survivor like have an effect on it? Like, is it like just simply not as fun to you as like, you know, not maybe not necessarily like idle plays and all of that, but just like the fast pace of new school doesn't matter to you. Are you in fact like nicer to old school seasons? Cause you take that into account. What's your take on old school survivor and Africa in general? No, it, it doesn't really matter to me because at the end of the day, I feel like what we get from the season isn't always based on how much like gameplay, like sometimes it falls into that. But at the end of the day, the way I, for my opinion on a season is the story that the editors edit around. So if the story of that season involves a bunch of idols, that's what it is. If it involves a bunch of like uh, friendships being, you know, uh, formed and broken and then like new ones being formed, then that's, uh, you know, that's the story. So no matter what they're given, I kind of got to look at every season pound for pound. I feel like the biggest thing holding this season back, honestly, is the location these guys had to deal with. I mean, it was uh, from what i understand like the hottest season we've ever had it was Brutal. in lens they had like no food their water was like um dirt <laughs> basically yeah pretty much. mud they were just I drinking mud about. so like by the by the merge they were all just exhausted so they were just like slogs the whole time so i mean am i gonna blame the cast for that no but is that gonna affect my decision on the season like of course like i'm not gonna i can't just excuse the fact that everyone didn't really feel like playing that hard you know whether it wasn't their fault but 
I, I feel like this season suffered from the location more than uh, any season I can I can think of. So that's a perfect segue into the question I'm going to ask Luke. And so Luke, like, how does the location? Because in this season is so brutal. This location is unlike any location. I mean, they were. I mean, what? There are people out there ready to shoot those, you know, uh, creatures ready to attack those contestants. I mean, they're on the lookout. Yeah. And just in general, I mean, obviously talk about Africa, but like, does location have any like, you know, bearing of a season for you? Does it matter to you at all? Yeah, I mean, I love the locations, you know, you I love, love the like the globe hop. Yeah, I love <laughs> I love Fiji. Uh, uh, yeah, I love the like globe trotting they were doing for the first three quarters of the show's life. Um, yeah, Africa, I 100% agree with Adam. Like, I it was the most brutal location. It really, really, really had an effect on the gameplay. I mean, you can just tell by the halfway point, even, but I mean, you can tell in episode one, like how they're just drained of like all energy. They got nothing in the tank. Um, yeah. So uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Apparently those like, animals were like a real threat too. Like I know that's, that's kind of saying. been like a, a thing, like in the survivor, like lore, but like from talking to a couple of people from Africa, they were like, no, that was, we were scared <laughs> or they I mean they were scared you know but um yeah that must have been harsh definitely wouldn't go there for survivor yeah, yeah i mean it's absolutely brutal uh russell you, we were a bit higher on this than adam and luke uh what makes it like a middle tier season for you yeah so for me i had a i started watching survivor in exile island my first full season cook islands so going back eventually watching all those old school seasons i had a hard time ranking them for the fun of it objectively and subjectively just because a big part of my rankings was that very first experience and it's so much so different on a binge where I tried to adjust that into my rankings and I thought old this was an old school season it was deemed as one of the hardest seasons of all time and you had some really fun moments happening big Tom Ethan Lex all that stuff happening and I just always remember in the back of my head when I was thinking about this ranking just that auction moment big Tom screaming up and down and I look for fun moments in Survivor, and I think we had a bunch of those here. Yeah, I would say, like, and I'll, well, obviously, uh, when I talk about Australian Outback when I get to it, but this is, like, everything I expected, you know, the Outback to be. Nothing too crazy, but an overall fun cast, good gameplay for what it's worth. You know what, um, Lindsay, like, play, you know, over, oh, what, how'd that work? Like, Lindsay, like, was talking about her boat, and because of, like, tied boats back then, that's kind of like an uh, old-school version of playing Idle Wrong, so that was fun. Um, the whole 5-4 votes where it looked like the game was going to be flipped around on Lex. That's an iconic move. and really does a game-changing move in Survivor, you know. Who knows if Lex gets brought back in All-Stars at that point. Um, the fall of Stylus, and especially if you know about Stylus nowadays, that's really fun to watch now. So, um, yeah, it just it, it's, that's why I have an average. Nothing too great, nothing too bad. Just an average season of Survivor that I really enjoy. And I really love location. I usually don't give a crap about that, but, boy, it's brutal. Massive respect to the people who are out there who especially the people made it to the end game and fire question for chat and fire question for you, Russell. So if you don't know um, the final four, the final four immunity challenge, apparently the production messed up and it was supposed to be uh, Lex also got the question, right? So, and so let's say Lex wins that immunity challenge and Kim goes home like she was supposed to do. How do you think the final three plays, plays out at that point? Who wins? Who's the runner up third place? What's the vote? Oh. I, I wouldn't be able to go too in detail with that so it would be tom lex and ethan yeah it, at that final media yeah, challenge final three if we assume i want to say like lex, lex wins that right we're right lex lex and ethan bring each other lex wins five two yeah i like that answer right there i think i wouldn't know the specifics how the numbers would work but i'm per, like i think there isn't a situation there where lex would end up losing honestly do you, do you think if Ethan wins, he brings Lex to the end? Anyway, you can I think that. Lex did a good enough job with that relationship with Tom and Ethan where he's good to go. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I would love to see Big Tom in that final media challenge. Because so, if you remember, like, Ethan was really sick. Lex was really sick. So, I don't know. He's a big guy. But who knows? I would have love to see that happen. Um, yeah. It's really uh, – yeah, that's the thing. That's what's always really yeah. uh, maybe talking about that earlier. Yeah, so average season of Survivor. I think we kind of all agree on that so far. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, any other comments about Survivor Africa? I feel like this season, the thing that holds it up the most is probably the cast, and it doesn't have that many cast members, at least in my opinion, that are like 
larger than life like rupert type characters i mean maybe big tom but like lex lex isn't like a you know a, a, a hatch or someone he's a very like personable character that people like but at the Let's same time yeah but at the same time i feel like this season is probably um the, the cast is probably held back the most by the locale again touching on the location okay. like if this was a, like a beach season like i feel like lex and big tom and t bird would have shown like shined and ethan would have shined like even more than they already did yeah. so like you know okay. location right, cool. man well doesn't big tom break the record or still holds the record to this day with the most weight lost in a yeah. season with africa it was some insane amount i think it's like 70 pounds yeah, yeah i thought it was like 80 or something yeah well, was, well like, that's still yeah. insane <laughs> yeah that's actually crazy courtney's yeah. number two china yeah. Right. For real. Yeah. All right. All right. So Survivor Africa. All right. So we on voted to Adam uh, off the island. <laughs> oh no. He'll be back. Oh, there he is. <laughs> good. Good. Yes, we're good. Okay, we're good. Yeah. All right. He was talking about the location. All right. On to number twenty. So I'll be honest with you guys. If there's one season I think we got wrong as Survivor YouTubers, I definitely think it's this season. I know Luke's already agreeing with me. Yeah. Um you know, and I get it could be because it suffers from where it's at. You know, the seasons that came after are certainly more memorable. Um, I know Jeff's not high on this season, um, but man, you want to talk about a game changing season? I truly think Survivor Marquesas at number twenty eight is a game changing season. Far that far tight too reward is game changing. <laughs> yeah, for real, right? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Keep going. So I had this. So me and Luke, we had it just outside our top ten. I had thirteen. Luke had eleven. Russell had this at number thirty. And Adam Middle Tier 21. Um, so yeah, Luke, I'll let you talk. I mean, what about the season almost crack makes this crack your top 10? Yeah, I I think uh in terms of like, well, obviously it's a huge game-changing season where like the players on the bottom and the majority actually switched over uh to uh, uh you know the other players and like formed a new majority. It's like what people uh are screaming at the TV you know, when you're actually watching Survivor, you're like, how do you not recognize you're on the bottom? And Nalia and Pascal actually did. Granted, it took a lot for them to realize that, uh, but, uh, you know, props to them and V and Sean and Kathy for flipping them. Um, it's also just like a really, uh, I, I can see that the cast is a little top heavy, but it is a really fun cast. I mean, Kathy is an all-time growth edit. Uh, watching baby Boston Rob try and do his mafia thing is great. I think that was <laughs> like a style of play the show had really never seen, but it was kind of like the logical extreme of where the show was going. Um, who else? Gene is a great pre-merger. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to hear Russell's takes yeah. on this. Uh, um, and of course, Vesepia and Sean are... <laughs> and all-time duo. Uh, Vesepi is a great winner. And of course, the uh, queen of sultriness, Zoe, is every time she's on screen is the best thing you've ever seen. So, Russell, why are you not high on as high on the season as, you know, me and Luke are? Yeah. Um, so, again, I uh, started watching Survivor a little bit after this. And binging back and going through all these seasons, I saw kind of like season one wow this is amazing survivor very first season two they similar 42 days we'll talk about that season three again the tribe swap they add on to that so i found like that first like the first three seasons that classic old school era as the peak that, that's where it all began and i find after that it's just season four I understand we have these cool things happen. The birth of the Rob father. That's insane. We have the kite reward challenge. That's stupid. That's probably why I ranked it so low. Yeah, um, that and I, I think overall the, the cast is too, like you pointed out a little bit, Luke, the cast is too top heavy for me. And I think that's one of the big problems with it. What do you feel as Vesepi as a winner? Cause she really is like the first like eh, winner. I mean, I mean, you can kind of compare it to Tina, but again, Tina was on the Outback. You know, everyone's watching the Outback, you know. You had Brian come after, Jenna, controversial, Sandra come after. Vesepi is really that first, like, kind of eh winner. So what do you feel about Vesepi as a winner, Russell? I don't Under remember specifically where I ranked her in my uh, winner rankings video, but I, she's, I don't think she's bottom tier, fully bottom tier. I think she's a perfectly good average winner. She did what she needed to do to get to the end. She was smart about how she did it, a good 
I think it was the problem of the time of Survivor didn't know how to edit her as a winner, the move she was making. And that's kind of uh, why the community thought, uh, same well, kind here- of thing with... Yeah, what were you going to say? No, I'm going to say, no, no, don't, guys, don't get the wrong idea. I, that's how the community feels about her. I think Vizepia is li- probably the most, along with Sophie, not just the underrated winner, probably the most underrated player there ever is. She was the first person, think. well, okay, not ever is, but, you know, really, really up there. She was the first person since, to, I mean, to abandon her minority alliance, not the first winner, the first person to abandon her minority alliance, realize, hey, guys, I'm not going to get anywhere by sticking with Robin Sean. I'll stick with you guys. And some people see that as giving up, but what else was she going to do? There's literally nothing she could do except ingratiate herself into the majority and hope they flip. And what happens? They flip. I mean, Luke, you pretty much became famous talking about the moment where she <laughs> essentially broke survivor, you know, yeah, uh, and, say yeah. what, <laughs> and say what you will about like, and that's the thing. Some people are like, eh, if you need a media win to save yourself, I'm not sure about that. Again, it's, she literally broke the game. That's so, so genius. And then she pulls like a reverse Richard hatch at the final media challenge. Absolutely unbelievable. But that be a, and of course, of course, being the majority to start the game with Rob and uh, who was his girlfriend at the time, Sarah and Sean, of course, all time duo, you know, just an amazing underrated player. Really the first to do it again, the first of her kind of break survivor, you know, such an underrated. And that's why I love Marquise so much. And again, that that uh, premier stretch is so amazing. Again, the first time we really ever saw like a big time player. So many first this season, right? The first time we saw a big time player in the premier get taken out, that being Hunter. Uh, the first flip, I mean, an all-time iconic moment. You know, the rock draw, of course, that's iconic, right? You know, Pacepi yourself being the first black female winner since uh, Marianne, that's kind of crazy, you know? So, so, so many, so many, uh, so many great moments this season. The final five stretch is just much watch, must watch TV between the flip and then the rock draw, all that good stuff. So, um, I'm super high on Marquesas. And uh, one of the reasons is because Pacepi, in my opinion, is such an underrated winner. But uh, Adam, I'll give you a chance to talk about this. And for my fire question for you as well, along with the chat, is what in, with all these moments, right? What, in your opinion, is the most iconic moment of Survivor Marquesas? Ooh, I mean, uh, yeah, Rock Draw, I think definitely is up there. I mean, kind of going along with what we talked about earlier, I think like the the flip was such a big moment. It was subtle. It's probably the biggest like subtle moment. I think probably in maybe survivor history, definitely in like early survivor history. Like I think that the two things, this season came at a good time because obviously survivor was a smash hit the first couple seasons. However, the big thing that people were wondering was, is it just going to be the same game every single season? Because as fun and exciting as it is, if it's the same thing every season, you know, it's going to get old fast. Uh, That's why, you know, as amazing and game changing as Jersey Shore was, they realized, okay, we got to go to Italy, guys. We got to go to Miami, mix it up a bit. I know Luke's a big Jersey Shore fan, so I wanted to throw uh, that yeah. in there. Yeah. The other thing I think this season uh, added was post merge, it really didn't have that many like big, larger than life characters. You know, we didn't yeah, have a Hatch, we didn't have a Tina, we didn't exactly. have, uh, or a, a, not a Tina, sorry, a, a Sue or a Colby or a Rudy. You know, not that, not that the players that made post merge weren't like, uninteresting but they were very like subtle and like uh, like introverted based on what we had seen um in the last couple seasons this didn't have a big tom it didn't have a lex um it had a lot of more personable down to earth players and it showed that a season can survive and be entertaining um without like a rupert carrying it to the to the end so well i can't believe we haven't seen sean rector back that's all i'm going to say to finish off our cases yeah boy you talk man oh man so, yeah, as you can see, uh, I think this already uh, we kind of know what's coming next with Russell made his comments. And that is indeed the case at number 27 is a very controversial season, a very uh, let's talk about breaking survivor. Uh, you know, the first ever winner get voted out. So we all again, we have some hot takes on this. We have um, it's a controversial season. Everyone has something to say about Edge of Extinction coming in at number 27. So Russell, again, was very high on this had se- at 17. Uh, I had it number 33, Luke had 24 and Adam had it just outside his top five, outside his bottom five, excuse me, at number 37. Um, so yeah, Adam, you were really, really low on about this. So what about this specifically makes this almost the bottom five season for you? The twist, the winner, like did the season not mean anything due to the ending? You know, I think it was just the fact that, I mean, I don't, I don't like the, the edge just as a whole, like the idea of it, but like the fact that the winner came from it and just like 
it, it to me personally, it felt like everything that we had watched leading You're up to it. You're a director. Like, it perfected the story of like, the season. Like nothing. Can you kick Russell out? Can, can you just kick him out for like five minutes? Uh, there, there was I didn't. There was the story that they presented me throughout. Was it didn't match with the the for me didn't match with the ending. It was like imagine taking like one movie and plucking the climax and like throwing another movie's climax at the end. Like I, I even though Rick winning would have been obvious and it would have been like a Mike Holloway edit where it was so clear he was going to win. I would have at least preferred that over and nothing against Chris because he played a perfect finale episode. But come on, I mean. I, mean, I will say that when I rewatch it, you know, a lot of people say you got to rewatch the season. It's better. Don't you know, rewatch this one. That's Don't. the thing for me. That's the thing. Oh, I, I rewatched it, it multiple times. I couldn't, so I couldn't get invested in all these big moves because the season's pretty good, but I just could not stop laughing. Like, wow, this literally does not mean crap because Chris Underwood's going to come back in. Idol at five. I mean, yeah. grant, you know, granted he did some other great stuff. Like the fact that he got Lauren to play an idol on him. That's awesome. But even then, like the edge told him to do that, you know, told him about, you know, Kelly told everyone about Lauren's idol. So it's just like, I just couldn't get invested to any of this stuff. And, you know, I guess it's maybe unfair to judge it in that way, but you know, I know Adam, you're big on like, you're big on the winner. Right. So that obviously that's probably why it's so low, like you said, the start, um, mm-hmm. but Russell, I'll give you a chance. I know you're dying. Uh, I'll give you a chance to defend the season. Okay. So ready. Um, you're shaking. People normally, <laughs> yeah. People normally complain about uh, these captain seasons of survivor, right? These captain seasons, they're not good. We don't like these captain seasons. Well, guess what? Because of the edge of extinction, you won't see captain season ever again. In fact, I would argue the worst part about this season is the captains. They're wasted here. Why did we waste bringing David back? Wentworth. I want to see Wentworth in a normal all-star season. We don't need them here. And even with the captains, we'll never see them again probably because of this season. This season still has a top-tier cast with so many fun, iconic, good moments of Survivor. Now... I can understand the hate, the frustration towards that uh, that that person that was voted out of the game and then somehow came back and won the game. I can understand that. In fact, I was really mad about that my first time watching as well. But you got to understand the story they're trying to tell. Take a deeper look. As a director myself, I like to look at the bigger picture of what's going on in these situations. Look at, look at what the edge of extinction, the story it's trying to show you. Every time it comes... I uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. It's yeah, you I, can't I, I can't it. block this. Exactly. Exactly. Just prove our point. Exactly. It's over. I'm almost about to kick you. I I can't. <laughs> the Chris Underwood thing. It's he has a great finale moment. The, okay. I, I okay. The season is a bunch of short stories put together, and you know what? If it's not a novel, it's not a full picture. But for if you take it for what it is. It's a good time. And you know what? I think the entire chat is with me on this one. So I'm no, just going mean, to sit are. down and I'll let Idol Dead talk. Okay. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> I think if you're like a hater of production meddling, you should love this season because, as Russell said, the returnee is like completely unnecessary. Just a, a clear like ratings grab. And they all go out. Aubrey goes out embarrassingly early. Joe goes out at the merge. Um, uh, David and Wentworth, their boots are like condensed into one one hour episode. They're like co- booted completely, like unceremoniously. Um, then there's the Edge of Extinction twist, which is an obvious attempt for them to get Joe back in the game should he go out early, which he does. And then he fails to get back in the game. The person who gets back into the game is, all due respect uh, to my dear friend Chris Underwood, but uh, he's not super electric television. He's not the most charismatic person. He's probably the person, I'm not sure how many people were, were really rooting for him in the audience to come back from the edge. Um, None. So, and then the person who comes back is like probably like the least charismatic person on the cast. So, every like twist they tried to do completely blew up in their face. And uh, so, yeah, I think. If you're a purist, a production meddling hater, you should love this because it uh, it shows like the pitfalls of uh, trying to meddle too much with the game. I can say, yeah, it's a good season. You got the Wentworth blind side. I mean, oh, man, Evans. the less uh, what was the boot tries name? Lesu is a complete train wreck. Yeah, like, they were the yeah Lesu. Manu and then Lesu. Uh, yeah, they're yeah train wreck, amazing tribe. All that's fun, you know. It's a fun season. Again, I just can't. When I first watched, I was pissed off, and I rewatched, I couldn't get interested in it. So. You know, it just because of that, I just can't really get invested into it. So here's my fire question for uh, Chad. I, I'm not done. 
Okay, fine. <laughs> you want to talk? I'll give you the fire. I was going to give it to Adam, but I'll give you the fire. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, no. no. Give, give Adam the question. I just, I also, um, I got a cameo from Victoria one time um, saying that I'm better th than Russell Hand. So I'm mean, yeah. like, come on, it, this is so cool. Make sure to yeah, subscribe. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Russell's trying to pass the other wrestling subscribers. So. Just... Yeah. yeah. So you got to unsubscribe from Russell Hands and then subscribe <laughs> to Russell Muscle. That's a muscle. Yeah. So, Adam, my first question and for you, Chad, as well. With this season being so interested placement wise, you know, the winner was a pre merge boot. The biggest player of the season, Devins, was also a fourth boot of the season. So, with all these weird placements, who, in your opinion, played the best game this season? Who, sorry, what'd you say? Who, in your opinion, played the best game this season? I think Devins. I think Devins. Oh, you do think Devins, game. despite him getting boat out first? I mean, fourth? Yeah. I think okay. Devins. I mean, it may be like, uh, like uh, if not him, then who sort of thing. But like to me, he played such a great like post merge. I mean, just the uh, apparently there was a bunch of other fake idols. Like there was just like twenty fake idols laying around at one point, and we really only saw his. So it's also kind of like I can only base it off the story that they gave me, and it was very Devin for a while there. But like seeing an underdog, not only because most time when underdogs make it. Um, up they kind of like slowly worked their way up like Devin's kind of went from like underdog to like even though no one was with him he just somehow was still at the top as far as like um, how far everyone thought he was going to go so I, I guess I'll go with Devin's but I it's 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 not like a, it put him on other seasons I don't know if I'd pick him I know Gavin's not the most interesting TV I definitely think he deserved to win that season um, I know there's a lot yeah. of bigs here a lot of Vix here. War Dog, you mean, hey, I mean, hard, hard player, despite, you know, you know, uh, not exactly being the ch best challenge piece, as Luke knows for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. Victoria so, set uh, herself up, like, perfectly to go to the final three with people she could beat. Uh, so, yeah. for me, it would probably be Victoria. Um, but, yeah, honestly, not a lot of super great players this season, which is another thing that makes it really yeah. fun for me. That's another thing, too. I think Kelly Wentworth played a really, really good game. This, I mean, boy, she played out some. Her and Lauren both had some really ballsy idol holds. Um, you know, yeah. this, this couple of tribals, the merge, all that. Russell might as well finish it. I mean, I say probably maybe, oh boy, between Gavin and Victoria. I don't know. I guess since Gavin got further without the most votes, I would choose Gavin. So Adam said uh, Devins and Luke, you said Victoria. Yeah. Russell, what do you think? Who played the best game this season? Chris Underwood. Oh, it's a raw split. Oh, my goodness. All right. That's a. Yeah, bye. <laughs> but to be fair, I mean, yeah. Devin, I mean, he got thrown out third. Oh, and realistically, Devin's probably Rick Devins. I would say that. Yeah. Okay, so that'll give us the win. All right. But, but yeah, I should do that in a second. Um, but before that, uh, any other final comments about Edge of Extinction? Again, very interesting season, you know. Um, of course, we got back when we were at war. But the fact that this actually came, you know, it's kind of surreal. That actually, after 38 seasons, we got a person voted out of the game, one survivor. So, I think it'll. I think it'll have like a renaissance in. Uh, I don't know how long it'll take, but I think people will be higher on this season in the future as like a, yeah. like a Gabon style train wreck. Uh, I I think it. I don't know. I could totally see that happening. I hope it happens. Like I said, some people are like it's that. Like, oh, happened. you got to rewatch yeah. it and you'll like it. I just never been for me. So, yeah. Uh, let's see any of comments here. All these reactions. Yeah, that was great. Oh, and we also had the. I picked the wrong one. Um, but we also had like the insane like tribal council at the final eleven. That was crazy. Again, there's good moments this season. Just you know, I just can't really get into it. Um, so this is a good segue into our next season because this next season number twenty six is pretty much the exact same way, right? There's a it's a good season, you know, good blind sides, good characters. The problem is the end game and especially the winner is what sours the season for a lot of people. So I guess it's only fitting that it comes after EOE. Um, because while most people have Chris, the worst winner, uh, the second worst winner is the winner of this season, survivor heroes versus healers versus hustlers. And also what were they thinking coming out that name for the season? Um, so yeah, what I mean, that's you guys, sorry. Uh, are we heroes, healers or hustlers? Uh, can we sort ourselves? I'd probably be, uh, Ooh, Chad, help us out with this. I mean, we're YouTubers, Which hustlers, we... right? Yeah. Yeah. Be hustlers. Oh, oh, yeah, hustlers. hustlers. Yeah. True. Yeah. All right, so let's just not waste any time with it, and I'll start with you, Luke. I mean, you might as well talk about Ben. What's your thoughts about Ben as a winner? I mean, does the season sour the – well, let me give you guys uh, rankings first. So Russell had his 29. I had, I was highest in it, 19. Luke had a 26, and Adam 34. So, I mean, might as well talk about Ben, Luke. What's your opinion on him, end game in general? Mm, yeah, I 
the the Ben bombs were a little too much for me, uh, but uh, the, the I mean the fire making obviously saved him and got him there. Uh, as time goes on and fire making is more and more part of the show, it becomes less of an issue for me. Um, I think the biggest problem is that just story wise, I think Ben playing this incredible like post merge game full of like all this like bravado and like uh, grandstanding to the jury and doing all these Ben bombs and then just being one upside down you uh, in the final challenge short of winning the game. Uh, I think that's a better story than uh, here's your get out of jail free card with fire making. Uh, I also yeah, think sure. like a, a Ryan, Chrissy and Devin final three would have been amazing. I think all three of them would have had winner equity in that case. Uh, and it would have been like the only final three in recent history where everyone had like a solid case to make. And uh, so, yeah, oh, yeah, it's just a missed opportunity that completely flubs it in the finale. But everything up to that's pretty great. Pretty for good. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We'll definitely, I'll definitely touch on that final three here in a second. Let me get to you, Adam. Again, we all know Ben should have gone home in final four, but the fourth fire making challenge. So what's your opinion about the final four fire making challenge? Do you think it's good for Survivor, bad for Survivor? Are you kind of neutral about it? Um, I'm always back and forth. I'll be honest. My initial reaction was didn't like it. I feel like I'm coming around a little bit more to it. Maybe I'm like getting more used to it and I know it's coming. Um, so I'm like adapting to it a little more. But I don't know, because at the same time, the alternative is the person that wins Final Four has so much, um, like almost in a, in a, like almost the most power you can possibly have in the game is that if you win um, the Final Four challenge. But and I do, in a weird way, think that with the fire making, it does lower it a little bit. So I, again, at first, I think I was against it. I think I've slowly come around to it i, I feel like it, it gets a bad rep um a lot because i feel like they because they did right they didn't announce it right it was kind of like a last minute <laughs> i don't know it's my hero as well Tony. yeah it's, it's mine as well yeah <laughs> luke's a, a hero healer and hustler yeah honestly <laughs> And yeah. yeah, I will say, and you know, you might be asking why I'm so much higher on this and Edge of Extinction. Well, that's why, because I feel like, I mean, look at the first final four boots before this. Wentworth, you know, uh, I guess Denny lost fire. Um, Ty, David, that pretty much broke good, Jeff. So, and it's been confirmed, I think, that this fire making challenge is always coming. So I don't yeah. see this as rigging. I don't see it as blatantly pissed off, you know. And say yeah, what you either. will about the idol yeah. finds. I guess the final five is pretty suspicious, not going to lie. But I mean, Ben was still busting his ass fine idols. Does that make him a good winner? Probably not. But I'm not going to hate the season for it. It makes for good television. Mm -hmm. um, again, the final immunity challenge is so dramatic. You think he's going home. And then, again, the fire making the last challenge. Again, I just don't hate it because I feel, I feel like it was always coming. So, um, And <laughs> you can't – and to be fair to Devin, I mean, <laughs> well, he breaks his foot that doesn't practice the rest of the day. And then he wonders why he loses the bend. So that's why I'm a lot higher on this compared to, like, Evan Extinction, where I do feel like – I know a lot of people, as we see, have these seasons really similar. That's just a waste of time because of the winner. You know, I don't feel like that with Ben like I do for Chris – and the Edge of Extinction as a whole. Um, but speaking of that final three, again, it's very interesting you said that, Luke. I was going to get to that. So my fire question to you, Chad, and you, Russell, who it's one of the greatest mysteries that, you know, I can't find anywhere, right? We all have different opinions on who who wins. Who do you? So who would you vote for in a Chrissy, Ryan, Devin final three? And who do you think actually wins that final three? And same thing for you, Chad. Well, so I wouldn't be wrong. So whoever I'm choosing would probably end up winning that. I'm, I'm looking at them right now. What's chat saying? Yeah. I'm still waiting. Yeah, chat, I, answer. I, wanted, just, I want to say Devin's because I feel like that's – or Devin's the popular oh, yeah. answer. But does – I feel like they Look all at the first three answers. Case. All yeah. three answers. All three people. Devin, Chrissy. This is Look at this. Ryan, Devin, Chrissy back to back. Oh, my goodness. I would say it would be – This is really crazy. Tighter between Devin and Chrissy. I, I would think Ryan would be the most – unlikely or maybe the biggest underdog going into that but he still does have a case so it's super tough to say there i'm gonna go with devin lock it in okay devin lock it in from what i've heard and i i don't know from what i've heard i think it was gonna be ryan that from what i've heard that surprised me yeah i'm surprised to me too that's what i've heard but again there's really no specific answer luke what do you think uh, I my knee jerk reaction is Devin. Uh, I 
I probably would have voted Chrissy, but I also wasn't there. My understanding is she rubbed a lot of people the wrong I way. Definitely don't think, so. I definitely don't think Chrissy wins. Yeah, she got those two locked yeah. votes, but I definitely think it is between Ryan and Devin. Put up, I, there's so many polls I'm trying. I'll do. Yeah, there's, like, there's only so many polls I can do. Adam, what do you think? It's tough. You know, one thing about this season is I actually rewatched it recently. Is I totally forgot how great of a pre-merge Ryan had. He like had a, such a fall off, like one of the biggest fall offs from how their position was coming into the merge. I think he realized, oh, I'm, I'm like the power player, and everyone realized it. So let me take a step back. Well, he took a, a jump back, like took it way too easy to the point where he just became invisible. Kind of. Who I think I would have voted for Chrissy, because um, oh. I also got to factor in like who do I think would have given the best you know because obviously we don't know how final tribal would have gone without ben there who kind of dominated it i don't know if Devin would have had as great of a final tribal as ben did so so, yeah yeah um so i would probably say uh chrissy i feel okay i like that you mentioned the pre-merge too because i think up until the finale this is a really good season of survivor Uh, right the pre-merge is great uh, yeah. super exciting uh it's i also rewatched it recently and i was like really surprised to see that like ryan's like the main character like you said uh for yeah. the the whole pre-merge the first half of the game um ben going undercover uh with ryan and chrissy and then ashley and Devin considering voting him off is like one of the like i don't know that was something we hadn't really seen on survivor <laughs> that was super exciting uh yeah, I, I just yeah, I think it's a, a super solid season that just completely like gets blue shelled at the finish line uh, by the fire making. Yeah. Right. Again, if we would have known the whole time, That's you know, and, I, and I'm not good. saying that the cast had to know, but I, I feel true, like yeah. the audience should have known that. And I if you notice now with these new yeah. twists, Jeff is announcing them to the cat to their to the audience early. I feel like this was a big huge part of it was was the reaction to it so yeah guys don't forget to like sub super chat all that good stuff as we're over halfway now into the podcast again really having you have fun with you guys being here discussing these again very controversial seasons um and we first got done talking about the two most controversial ones still got plenty more to go but again thank you guys for being here super super fun and so now it's kind of like the exact opposite we had some pretty controversial seasons well not number 25 is Probably like the least controversial season it is. And because it's so random, a train wreck, absolutely more of a comedy than an actual Survivor season. Some people really, really hate it and some people really, really love it. So um, at number 25 is Survivor Gabon, um, a.k.a. what a first boot season probably looked like. So uh, Russell had this at number 18. I had it at number 29. Luke had 27. And Adam had this in his bottom five at number 39. So... Yeah, so he's one of those people who are on the big uh, lower end of things. So, Adam, what makes this season? Uh, all these terrible seasons, but Gabon is a part of your bottom, bottom tier in that bottom five. What do you not like about Savar Gabon? You're not a big uh, train wrecking guy? Uh, no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> yeah. There is uh, – I feel like this is probably the uh, the most – correct me if you guys have a different opinion. This might be the most love it or hate it season yeah. um, in the show's history. Um, yeah. I hate it. <laughs> Gideon, my co-host over at Survivor Buffs, he loves it. I, what did he? Where did he put? I was trying to look while you were. He said top so he, five, I think. Top five? Sorry. That's that's insane. Like that's crazy. Top five. I think it's seven. Come on. I mean, I <laughs> I believe you, but geez, top five. Gideon's crazy. Um, I hope he's watching too. Um, yeah, I probably if you ask me now to name half the cast, I don't know if I could. Um, don't think it had like enough memorable moments. I liked. Uh, very little characters didn't really like the winner um probably my favorite thing from this season was the challenge where they rolled like the giant balls down the hill um and if that's my biggest takeaway then uh that wasn't a good season these are some there was some unique challenges that you have to give it that do this great location i will say that that's one thing that I've always i mean again, jeff not, almost I, quit jeff almost quit yeah, after this season apparently i would have quit <laughs> i would have quit after week week two Get me out of yeah. here. You can say when he was doing the voiceovers, right? It's almost like Fong had a death wish by voting out this person. I, it was even like after watching the season, he was done with it. Um, but Russell, you were the highest on the season, highest on the season. So what do you like about uh, Gabon? 
Except now, don't don't be crazy with this. I'm not like a top five good bone yeah, above average, anything. right? <laughs> yeah, 18. eighteen. You know, just above average. It's a it's a good season. Option. Um, I, I think that's a like a kind of insane hot take that Adams got thrown around here. That there's oh, first he really said insane. Good moments. He said insane. Ooh, so that's fired. <laughs> um, the, the yeah, ones on top of my head, we it. have the Randy fake idol moment we have with the Bob uh, idol. We have the sugar shack on the exile island we have one of the i was gonna say funnest i don't think that's Must a word see. is it one Must of the best TV. auction moments with uh yeah cookie gate there too like there's just so many fun moments of survivor that take place here if you don't take it too serious that's the problem here like it's a train wreck season and not much strategy good strategy is going on but so many memeable just fun stupid things going on here throw it on the tv if you're bored doing anything I mean, play in the background you don't need to fully watch it it's, it's gabon it's whatever yeah go through these comments boy there are actually you know you forget about all these iconic you know moments to me i mean this survivor reddit's favorite season because of just how memeable it is so i mean that's and, and again, we could have had Susie would be the winner that would be crazy could you just imagine right all because of a damn cookie right could you just imagine Susie smith as a winner um and yeah, and that's the reason why, again, it's so ambiguous because if you love Survivor Strategy, this is not the season for you. And as Adam showed, why right? top five? Or if that's something you need, you're sick of strategy, you just want to have probably like a casual viewer. I could see this, you know, as crazy as it sounds to me and Adam, like I could see this being top five. I truly do see why some people really do love this season. But Luke, uh, we're kind of in the, you know, more lower t- middle tier, but not, you know, yes, yeah, at uh, 27. What's your take on Survivor Gabon? Yeah, I, I think that. Uh, if I rewatched it, I would rank it a lot higher. Uh, I just haven't rewatched it in a couple of years. Um, but uh, yeah, it's chaotic. Uh, you can definitely say that. Uh, just for me, the, the, this is the toughest one to like remove from like when I watched it live because uh, watching it live, you know, when I was young, it came on the heels of China and Micronesia, just like two super great seasons it was the first hd season so there was a lot of hype right. around it just a beautiful location uh and then it's just you're like this is the this is the season that comes after micronesia and is like right. our introduction and before to, like, uh, def, like, yeah uh so yeah it's, this is Tokachines, that's funny yeah they yeah. should have just swapped these around uh when they aired them to be honest uh yeah. token chains so, like, and gabon yeah you know, there's those moments in a horror movie where, like, you're like, oh, no, don't go in the closet. Like, oh, why'd you do that? You're just, you know, this this season felt like that. There was a lot of just, like, dumb decisions. Like, people were in good positions, like, on the on the power rank scale and way overplayed their card. Uh, there was times where people were playing a good, like, incognito game and then just didn't. Um, you have GC almost forgetting to go to a challenge. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm just forgetting. I, you think of the obvious moments, and then look at all these comments. Like, it's just like ten different comments of all the dumb stuff that's happened this season. Um, also, I mean, I will say this: you also have like the biggest edge wine side, Marcus, with that winners at it, and so that that's always been cool for me. One of the things, yeah, just a little too, just a little. Ken is a good villain, like. And just, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, the Ken's heel turn is so fun to watch because he is just like this like plucky underdog at the start. You're really rooting for him to like I don't know, fl- just flirt with Michelle, uh, and then by the end he's like this uh, you know he's gone like full villain. He's like c- completely conniving and like uh, so yeah, he that was great too. So okay, so with that said, Luke, who and this is the uh, fire question for you and Chat. Who, in your opinion, is the uh, is your favorite character in a season full of wacky characters? Who is your favorite character of Survivor Gabon? Uh, I would say Ace with Ooh, Crystal as a one. number two. Yeah, Ace that's going early is a crime against humanity. Yeah, he, that's sorry, cat. Uh, yeah, Ace is like such a fun villain. Uh, he's so smarmy. The like fake British accent is amazing. Uh, <laughs> everything really about South, him is good. South African accent, accent too. All the different accents this season. Yeah, I believe her accent's real. Uh, Ace, I'm still yeah, yeah, Jerry's I, out on. She was born from South Africa, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So a lot of again, a lot of sugars here, of course. Um, I'm surprised with the amount of crystals. Crystals. Yeah. I mean, like I said, say what you will about her. She's one of those interesting people where she's an Olympian that sucks, but she still played a decent game. And her and Kenny are one of the most unlikely duos ever. Love Ace and Corinne. Oh boy, like Ace and Corinne. That's a that's a take. <laughs> Billion. 
Maddie's yeah. a fine hero to root for. Like he's fun. Yeah. Uh, he was like the most normal, kind of the most normal person there. And even then, just not you don't think of Maddie as like an amazing fire player. I mean, yeah, but, yeah. And you say, like, he say was like Michael was... Bluth in Arrested Development, just like a normal guy surrounded yeah. by a yeah, bunch yeah. of nut jobs. Yeah, of course. I mean, of course, Riri, I got Randy this season. What do you guys think? Do you guys think he's actually that grumpy in real life or is it a little bit of a camera? What do you guys think? He's probably grumpier. Grumpy are we? We're more grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> he tones it down. <laughs> I saw he uh, put on uh, Twitter, his, his uh, he did a little parody of the, Survivor. I don't know if you guys saw this, the Survivor family promo they put out a couple weeks ago. Randy put out his own spin on it, just yelling at the characters and whenever the family members came on. It was so funny. He put it on Twitter the other day. Make sure you check it out if you haven't. He is great. I mean, like I said, I, I do like the characters. I mean, there's so many fun moments. It's just a little too train wrecky for me. I just that, you know, like I said in the when I first said, um, how about see, uh, see, ranking the seasons? I do want that good gameplay. It's just simply not there. A fun fact, this is the only season where every vote was only two people got voted for. Like it was a unanimous 8 1 vote or a 4 3 vote. Yeah, it really was. So it's kind of, which is kind of funny because you'd think the votes would be all over the place, but no, the gameplay is bad and the votes aren't that interesting, right? So hmm. yeah. So it just, yeah, it is what it is. I don't hate it. I guess it's kind of funny. I said it's such a either you love or hate it. I don't really love it. Don't really. I mean, I guess I do have a 29. So I'm more on the lower end, but. um yeah, it's just one of the, it's definitely a season of Survivor. You know, you can't forget about Gabon with all these iconic moments. Um, it's definitely a season of Survivor. It's, I mean, this is literally the first one, the first five minutes of the season. We learned that one of the biggest characters is a wedding photographer who hates weddings. I mean, we knew we were in for a trailer. Love. That, yeah, hates love in general, right? Yeah, not, I, didn't, well, I didn't mean to click on that, but hey. Yeah, I know his family visit was going to be his dog. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. So that's it was how either got the it. heroes and villains or Gabon reunion. He didn't bring anyone. He just brought some Survivor fans on the street. Yeah. Yeah. The reunion. Got to so. let it. So it's definitely a season of Survivor. I got respected for that, but just for me, just not really for me. Um, and that will bring us not really a good segue, but uh, let's just get into number twenty-four. Um, so yeah, on to number twenty-four. Probably the biggest uh, Survivor season of all time. After seven, you know, iconic seasons of Survivor, we brought back. 18 of its biggest players, some big, big time players to battle it out for the title of Soul Survivor All Star. At number 24, I almost clicked on the wrong one, is indeed fact Survivor All Stars. So, Russ, so we got some interesting uh, takes here. So, Russell and Adam had this just outside their top 10. Russell, number 11, Adam, number 12. And me and Luke had, I had this at number 30, and Luke had this at number 31. So, I'll start with you, Luke. As someone who actually lived it, I know you're obviously younger at the time, like, 12 or 13 or something mm -hmm. but just tell us like you know as someone who didn't live through it just please tell me about the hype of the season and do you think that affects the way you look at the season actually living through it in a good or bad way as opposed to me who rewatched it and maybe didn't understand it and didn't understand the drama yeah i i the biggest thing uh in terms of like what was going on live is that romber mania was like sweeping the nation like their wedding was televised they were on magazine covers like crazy survivor like at, at a certain point didn't even care that all their big characters went home because they knew they had this like amazing love story uh in the can so uh that's the biggest thing that i remember is just like their presence was ever present like you could not get away from rob and amber uh for honestly like two years after this season so and, and while it was airing as well so uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing for me that I remember. And that's the thing in a season full of Colby Rubers and all those, the winners, it's the probably two of the more lesser known all stars that dominate the season and are still legends to this day. Um, so, uh, Russell, what do you, uh, what puts this just outside your top 10? Like, interesting take there. So, our all stars, despite the darkness, despite all the big legends go home. It's a good take. Good take. Well, I was uh, hoping you would go with Adam first. Like, I just agree with every single thing okay. he was saying. <laughs> Yeah, you guys really um, no. agree for a while. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's a different perspective not watching it live and going back later on. Right. But so, and I did it wrong as well. I got, I remember going into Survivor, a little history lesson here, going into Survivor fans versus favorites. I was like, whoa, they can bring players back to again to, for future seasons. Yeah, I was so like, I, I went back to watch a couple and I was like, wait, there's another All Star season. So, in a stupid reason, I, I, don't know why I went right to all stars instead of watching all the previous seasons. So I didn't get the full effect the first time watching it. You have a bunch of dark moments, but so many crazy character driven moments from these pregame alliances. And I really like how survivors 
kind of a Letting the audience know, hey, we're not stupid. We know these pregame alliances, they do exist. And acknowledging that in Winners at War with the, the Poker Alliance, whatever. But they didn't acknowledge it as well in All-Stars. They want to pretend, hey, pregame right. alliances, they don't exist at all. Even though all these casts were full celebrities at the time, they're all best friends. So <laughs> I thought it was really interesting to see that. A lot of people dislike the dark Lex Rob moment. I think it's a super interesting reality TV moment in general. And then just in the realm of Survivor, so crazy and a super memorable moment. And then we already touched on this, Rob and Amber, for how special and how big of a scale that was on, I think this season needs to be up there in everyone or most people's rankings. Okay. Adam, do you have anything to add on to that along with Russell? I mean, that was that was all music to my ears. I love this season. That was I actually just uh, got off another podcast, I think about a week ago, where we were discussing uh, like a rewind for All Stars. So a little, it's a little fresh in my head. There was just a lot of firsts from this season, like you said, it was the first retur- all returnee season um, or returnee at all. I think well, the next was what Guatemala, but it was the first um, All Star season, right? In his name. First, yeah, first uh, pregame alliance first uh time like a power couple was like uh existed in the game um you know the first time that we had to deal with like voting off winners which like to me that is probably the thing that holds it back the most for me is that they go after the winners so early on um which at the end of the day somewhat had its benefits because i it quickly i realized okay we're gonna have some we're we're not gonna have a two-time winner here um, which I think was was better for the show. Um, this kind of saved uh, sort of this and Heroes and Villains were kind of the two seasons that kind of saved the show uh, in that, uh, according to Jeff, I think later said in an interview in recent years, All-Stars was supposed to be the last season. They kind of put all their cards into it because Survivor, like, you know, had this up at the beginning, but it was kind of going downhill a little bit. And um, a lot of the CBS producers were like, this is, this is it. We're going to, let's go out with a bang though. Let's who's the best of the best. And um, like Luke said, like Rob and Amber kind of dominated all of like reality TV for like a year or two. I mean, I remember as a kid hearing about Rob and Amber. Um, I remember my parents watching the one hour wedding special on CBS. Um, Yeah. There was just a lot of firsts in the season. Like I said, at the beginning, for me, it's it's moments. So many big moments. You know, Rupert flooding the, making the uh, the the shelter in the sands, and um, yeah, it was just the Lex betrayal thing. Which um, I know a couple of people were saying Lex was still bitter. He's he's well, actually come around to it recently. That, but. That's a good segue into my fire question for a chat. So mm-hmm. Russell, ask you, whose side do you take? Do you take Le- when it comes to, of course, the final ten scenario where you know. Uh, Rob asks Lex, hey, back her up, you know, I'll protect you and then betrayed, you know, whose side do you take? Is it, you know, no different than what Lex did to Ethan and all those people or just is it different? Whose side do you take? And chat, that goes for you too. Um, Am I like choosing this as like an outside source looking in or am I one of the players? Uh, I guess I'm just being me. I'm I'm taking the Rob side, honestly, Okay, because it's, it's a game. Rob did what he needed to do. Lex was kind of doing the same thing earlier in the season, and he just got caught this time with it, with those pre-gaming. I think the heat of the moment, the million dollars involved, these people, they came into All-Stars being basically full celebrities at the time. That's how big Survivor was. They knew national television, everyone was going to be watching them. Lex got screwed by Rob, and uh, Rob became a crazy player after that. I think uh, maybe you guys can disagree with me on this. I never, I mean, I understand where Lex is coming from because, like, obviously, his pregame alliances obviously he's turned his back on Ethan and all Jerry and all those people, but he never like actually made an in game promise with them like he did, you know, with Rob actually in that moment, right? I think that's what people always get why he's confused. Well, I think that's where Lex is coming from, you know. Yes, he turned his he turned his back on all his friends, but it was a game at that point. But what he did, you know, to save Lydia's future wife, you know, was a personal friend of friend that. He wanted to be back up. And the fact that it actually took place in the game, I think that's what all, what Lex always meant. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with that, disagree. Maybe it doesn't make a difference at all. Um, I think in a game, it, it honestly doesn't matter. I, I, okay. That's the, the crazy I, part I, about Survivor I, when we all it love it. It doesn't matter, I, but I see where Lex is coming from, why he thought it was a difference. That, and that's the thing. I don't think 
people realize like what is Lex talking about? I think that's what he meant. Well, and wouldn't have wouldn't Lex have like dumped Rob if at some point like so? I mean, really, that's my understanding at least. So uh, Rob just beat him to the punch. Uh, for me, it's always been sour grapes with Lex. Like okay. he just he got got first, uh, and he got straight up outplayed, and uh, he was mad about it. Which and he's entitled to be. Uh, Rob did him dirty in a really tough way and Lex held him accountable with his vote. That's how That's Survivor true. goes. So, yeah. yeah. And he did the same thing to Ethan. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, he never like actually made an in game outside the game. He, I'm yeah. sure he was friends with him. He never like made an in game final two deal with Ethan, you know, and that's, he actually made a deal with Rob to back him up. I and mean, that's what always been the difference to me. Yes, it's petty how you look at it, but that's where I, I see where Lex is Survivor isn't from. won or lost by the fans, though. It's it's won or lost by a, a jury. That's true, yeah. That you voted. Just, yeah, yeah. I'd say the sure. pregame is also okay. part of the game uh, with All-Star seasons. I right. Mean, so. And like we said, this was the first time. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. and of course, the, the celebrities. So I understand where Lex is coming from. Um, all business this time. Yeah, lots of uh, definitely a controversial season. That's the thing for me. Because, you know, that really was the only big... I'm trying to think of, like, other, like, big-time runoffs this season. Was there, like, any, like, big-time runoffs this season? I mean, I think, I think Hatch. When they finally got Hatch, yeah. yeah. Hatch, I mean... Well, I mean, those are big mo But that was, like, pretty foreshown, right? It wasn't, like, a big blindside. Like, the gameplay this season wasn't great. You know, season, seeing all those people go out. All the ugly moments... got bamboozled. That's, yeah, oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. I give you that. A lot of ugly moments this season. Um, and again, even that biggest moment, you know, caused so much controversial, just, it is hard to watch, even though I didn't live through it, even I can tell how hard that season is and boy, how awkward that must've been, you know, just watching all these best friends, celebrities just go at each other. So I don't know. I've never been too high on it. Um, look, I never really did ask you though. Why are you like super low on this? Uh, just the same, uh, just the ugliness of the pre-merge with, uh, you know, the, the incidents that happened there, but also, just uh, watching all the like big heroes and villains go out early. Uh, I mean, it's an absolute nightmare boot order. Uh, I mean, I guess of like all the like big characters who came into the season, what Rupert and Lex and Kathy are the only ones who really make the merge. Yeah. I guess Alicia a little bit. Uh, so yeah, just like watching like, Tina and Rudy and Rob and Jenna Maraska and Hatch and Sue and Colby and Jerry all go out early is like brutal. Yeah, it's pretty pretty brutal. And again, especially for someone like you who actually watched it live, even for me, who watched it back, it's still brutal. You know, and just again, the gameplay is not that great. The uh, ugly moments, just not the season for me. Um, yeah. but again, I can see I can see why people like it. Again, definitely has people talking. Um, so yeah, any other thing to say about All Stars, anyone? Great Survivor season. All-Stars is a good season of Survivor. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, me and I'm, I'm, glad, glad, I'm glad we can agree on something, Adam. Yeah, yeah the I guess me, I'm waiting for me and Luke to, I don't, if we disagree on something because we've been really, really similar. No, so we're really lockstep on our yeah, ratings. Yeah, cool. I can say I have similar opinions to idled out. Awesome, awesome. All right. So, Drew, Drew, get out of the chat, Andrew. Can you kick him? Is that possible? Can you kick <laughs> Andrew? To... All right. On to number 23. So... Speaking of old school, where you know we're just talking about you know celebrities and all that stuff, you know, there's not a more iconic season, more watch season uh, than this season. It literally half the cast, eight of its players, half the cast came back for future seasons. And you know, for me, that's the reason why I think it's a little overrated. But here at number twenty three in the middle tier is season two, the Australian Outback. So Russell had this twenty four. I had this. I was super low on this. I had it thirty six. So I guess we do kind of disagree on this, Luke. Uh, you had it middle tier twenty one. And Adam had it 17. So, Adam, please explain to me why uh, this is in your upper half of the rankings. Because, man, I have a lot to say about uh, why I don't like this season. I love. I mean, I love the cast. I love. Uh, there was a lot of interesting like uh, dynamics. I feel like it was a good. I love like, when a guy falls in the fire. <laughs> yeah, there was a yeah classic. There was. Um, I mean, like in a weird way, I feel like that moment to, to run off that, like it really did prove to a lot of people like, OK, this show is real because, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to believe now. But when season one was going on, a lot of people thought this is a scripted show. Like people didn't realize this is, you know, I mean, obviously there's a production crew. Like if someone faints, they're not just going to be like, oh, they're fainted now. Like they're going to help them. But, you know, a lot of people are like, how, how real was this show? And when... uh 
Michael was his name. When he went down, um, a lot of people are like, oh, shoot, this this is the real deal. I didn't know people could get medevac in a weird way like it kind of helped the show a little bit um so as far as why i like this season i mean it might be my favorite cast like favorite newbie cast oh, really? okay i'd say so i just yeah there's a lot of interesting dynamics like i was saying before like season one had some great characters but like the dynamics between them i mean the dynamic between rudy and hatch was incredible but like I don't know. This season almost, it obviously wasn't scripted, but it felt like I was watching like a scripted TV show and the way that like relationships were developing and changing and altering. And like, you'd see two, you know, two people would be close, but then to be another person come in and kind of break them up. There was just a lot of like, like personable dynamics to the season that we didn't really see in season one. So um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy the season. Okay, uh, let me ask you, Luke, what do you think about this cast? Do you think it's overrated? Do you think it deserves to be known? Like Adam just said, probably his favorite cast. Do you think it deserves to be known as one of the most iconic casts? And in general, what's your thoughts about the Outback? Newbie cast. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think they would have been, even if this was like the worst cast in the world, I think they would have been like some of the most famous people on the planet while the season was airing just because Survivor was so huge. Uh, I think overall, it's like a pretty solid cast. There are a few people who are... Uh, not as exciting as you might want. Um, and some people in hindsight who uh, probably aren't as great of people as, uh, you know, they might have been portrayed as. But um, for me, the True. biggest thing about this season is that you can, like, I, I rewatched this a couple months ago, and you can, like, cleave the season in half in terms of entertainment value, in terms of Boy. pre pre Jerry and post Jerry. Because uh, when, when the pre merge with, especially with what's going on with like Jerry and Colby is like, she is such a fun villain. And then the, like all the energy is just sapped out of the season the second she's voted out. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's literally like a, there's literally like a montage, like towards the end of like Keith catching grasshoppers. And it's like, okay, this is, this is what we're having to put on TV to fill time because Jerry's right. not here to be entertaining. So <laughs> And that's why I had the season so low. That pre that pre jury is pretty decent. Lots of you know these. I mean, again, I don't like love the cast as much as others. All time great merge vote. That jury phase is brutal to get through. Mm -hmm. Like you said, there is not even that boring vote offs. They are just spending you know pretty much entire episodes just talking about camp life. And hey, I know a game might be a little too game by these days, but oh my god, when you're spending the entire episode talking about the flooding and just challenges can we get it Kobe's gonna win a challenge that's cool give us stuff even like when there's a big move like amber gets blindsided we get nothing about that that's they spent the entire episode talking about the conditions and <laughs> survivor in general all that stuff you know well, and, again, and there are more episodes than a usual season uh oh, that final three episodes. days oh. yeah there's like a yeah it is there, it's like oh, 16 or 17 episodes or something outrageous like it is just so long too that it's just like okay we get it like exactly. Tina or Colby's gonna win let's just get there like and that's the thing at, at, at the final nine and okay the, one of those guys are gonna win it's gonna be those final three and it just drags on nothing's happening even when something does happen nothing happens because the way it's edited it is just too brutal I'm glad hopefully people take my side I know uh, agree with that I know finale I think I think we can all agree dude, that the finale is probably the worst ep finale episode ever I mean it is a final Love three. The over 90 minutes long and it's just i'm talking you know keith, i mean i guess it's you know a blind side that keith wins home but I, I i guess a good final two but man oh man is that brutal um so uh i don't think you've talked about the season have you yet russ yeah this uh i literally put the season down a couple of rankings just for that finale episode that finale episode <laughs> is like worse than watching paint dry like if you want to get someone to hate survivor show them that episode of survivor maybe one like the worst blocks of television i've ever consumed in my life um it's just so boring it i think it comes it down to we touched on it too many episodes um people complain all the time Ugh, new school era of survivor 26 days that's not real survivor you know what 42 days isn't real survivor try come try surviving 42 days that's not fun i'm, I'm way more happy with 26 days survivor than 42. Yeah, I mean, that's what they talked about. Instead of strategy, they just talk about Elizabeth losing her hair, how much weight everyone lost, you know, the conditions. It's just that at some point, give us something what's going on gameplay-wise, you know. 
again, like you said, Luke, it's pretty obvious what the final three is going to be after the merge vote. Just and even the big blind sides, you know, we get nothing out of it. So I, I agree, and I do. Um, I do notice. I think for a while there, I think people were kind of afraid to put it too low. I do notice, like over the years, I think people are a little more harsher to it. Maybe not as harsh as I am, but I definitely think we landed here in the uh, middle tier is a good spot. Um, and we'll obviously try to compare this to Rob has a podcast after his words, see where he has it. But yeah, always interesting to see uh, what people say about this season nowadays. Um, because and it's iconic, but you know, just a little, a little too boring for me, and I think for most people. Um, yeah. Any other comments about the Australian Outback? It's crazy watching uh, Colby, the, the challenge performance, how popular he was. That's like, true. I mean, yeah. Hearing about, uh, I didn't watch Australian Outback before I watched That's Heroes true. and Villains, and hearing that opening episode, you were so popular. People named your kids after him, and then he says, no, I heard the dog thing. Like, that That was just so cool to hear that. Going back, you kind of understand why he was so popular. And I'm cool for focus on this stuff, but the entire episode, oh my God, yeah. it just got too bored. I had to, I literally, like, mm-hmm. skipped some parts. I was so bored, so... Um, when do you, uh, that, I, I was going to almost name drop him. Do you guys know the Mourinho re- review? I can't pronounce his name. Yeah. 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 I, I think I noticed that right when he put this last in like 2019 or so, when he did his big rankings video, I did kind of know, I feel like that's when people were a little more harsher. The fact that he was so harsh this season, you know, that video has over a hundred thousand views as we came known for. I feel like ever since then, you know, things have switched and people are a lot more uh, ruthless to the Australian outback and I'm, I'm honestly all for it. So. Yeah, it feels like histor- like people have been like afraid to criticize it right. for its historical value, but uh, he was the first one. Yeah, oh, we're so far removed it. from it. Like, yeah, it's just boring at the end. Uh, and yeah, so. and we'll, when we talk about Borneo, I'll get into it that. But you know, it's still. I mean, I can't overlook. Oh, it's just season two. You have to give it credit. No, I'm sorry, it's just a little too boring for me. Anyway, I want to go on about this. We got to get it. Um, all right, and I can see why people like it, but not for me. All right, but. Now on to number 22. We got two more seasons here, guys. This has been super fun. Yeah, drum roll. Um, talk about middle tier seasons. So, yeah, we'll have a lot to say about it. And um, at number 22 is a season really defined by one man. Um, we kind of already touched on him. And uh, it also gave us the first uh, actual theme in Survivor of the men versus women theme, which does not age well these days. But at number 22 is Survivor Amazon, a.k.a. The season that gave us the birth of Rob, which in some ways also sparked uh, Survivor YouTube, which is why we're here. So full circle moment. <laughs> so I uh, Russell had this 25. I was the highest on this by a long shot uh, at number 12. And Luke and Adam, I think the first time in this entire first two streams were dead on. Both had this in number 20. So um, I'll give you guys both to explain why you think this is mediocre seasons. I'll start with you, Luke. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say it's mediocre. I, I just it's like pretty average i average way. there's yeah it's it's almost like survivor samoa where i think in my personal rankings i kind of have them similar where it's so defined by one character uh I, so it really depends on like how much you like rob c um as well as your tolerance for some of the like comments a lot of the men make obviously weren't great then have definitely not aged well now um i so, so. Yeah, it's also a really horny season, which is just uncomfortable to watch now. I mean, like, they literally put, like, the little picture-in-picture of, like, the guys, like, dreaming about, like, Heidi and Jenna and Shauna. And it's just like, wow, this would never happen today. Uh, So, as an artifact of, like, 2003 or whenever it aired. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Right. Like I said at the beginning, like, for me, the number one thing is, like, the big moments. And come on, the the peanut butter thing? Like, all-time moment. All time yeah. moment. Come on. One thing I like about this season um, is it seems like it's the first season where the strategy and the development of the gameplay of the season really starts to, you can clearly see it really starts to be influenced by previous seasons. Like Survivor kind of built from Australian, or from Borneo, Australian Outback, Africa, all the way to Thailand, Marquesas. It seems like they kind of presented the show as if all the players on it had never seen uh, the other seasons. It seemed like it was very clear that, like, <laughs> true. It seems very clear that, like, Rob it was a huge, was a like, you know, it was a fan of the show. Um, I also, uh, from what I understand, he was a big, big brother fan as well. So I think that influenced his his game too. But it seems, and nowadays you see, of course, people are always referencing old the seasons, metagame. whether directly or indirectly with like 
you know, nowadays when someone has an idol and you know about it, immediately you hear Idol Flush, which, you know, dates all the way back to uh, what was, was Cook Islands was the first Idol Flush. Oh, um, yeah. Um, so it seemed like the first time where there was like some indirect references and decisions were made in this season that you clearly could tell were influenced by decisions people made in previous seasons. So that was cool. It, it was an aspect of the show that um, maybe the producers didn't see uh, coming when they first planned it, but I think it was, it was cool to include that. Well, yeah, you can see that like the literal next season as well, where like Johnny Fairplay right. takes the Rob C template and just adds like a villainous like spin on it. So yeah. Right. So, as we approach the end of the stream here, guys, get like, sub. This is super, super fun as we close out. And speaking of super fun, I mean, that's why I'm super high on this season. The pre-merge is pretty boring, I'll admit that. Um, get a very lackluster winner, and it's not great to watch. But, man, did Rob really just change the game. And not, did not just change the game. Those episodes are super, super entertaining. Um, you got the, what, the Dina blind side. Oh, how could we forget the merge episode? The first time they ever, like, really foreshadowed the boot, that Roger boot. Super entertaining. God, that guy was an ass. And he got his commitments. <laughs> and then, yeah, final seven. Alex tells, tells him he's going home. And then, of course, Rob flips. Like, legitimately, in final six, that was a normal thing to do. Our final seven, you know, first six seasons, that was, like, not, you know, abnormal. And Rob took advantage of that. The uh, swing boat, first ever time we saw a swing boat go home at the final six. That's amazing, you know. And it just came down to one challenge. I also love Matt, you know, his arc. You know, the first time a goat really was ever shown in a positive light. And why I don't love Jenna's win, you know, I do appreciate how they try to trick the audience. And um, you can see, if you do rewatch it, you can see why she won. Um, but speaking of the whole Jenna, I know we kind of touched on the men and women twist so far. Russell, what's your thoughts on the men and women's twist this season, or just in general? Um, obviously came back two other times. Is it good, bad? What's your think takes on it? Make sure, Chad, you let us know as well. What do you think? Yeah, oh, yeah, um, that's my entire question, sir. Honestly, uh, it was cool. First theme, first kind of twist, first survivor. I I liked it this time, I guess, because we're, we're trying something new, but I don't think we needed to see it again afterwards. Um, just I like the dynamics of the men and women together. It kind of separates it, or I like it working together in that sense. I think the worst time they had it was One World, because I think I really want to see that One World twist again when it's just a normal season of Survivor. We kind of touched on this last week, so I won't go into too much detail. But sure I like Russell's that they did it. I like that we did it. We don't need to do it again. Yeah. I will say, like, I think this is another one. Like, five years ago, Amazon 100% would have been above Vanuatu. But, again, yeah. the fact that, you know, whether it's just aged poorly or, you know, all that stuff, I think that's the reason why it's more of a middle tier, not just for us, but for a lot of people. People really come around on Vanuatu and not so much – on this season, I think that's the reason why we haven't seen, you know, they did it two more times after this because it was so well received, but now we haven't seen it again. Season not as well liked, which I understand. I just I just love Rob's gameplay post merge, super entertaining. Um, any thoughts about Jenna? I'll ask this for any of you guys who want to answer in chat. What are your thoughts about Jenna as a winner? Worst first winner? Pittsburgh winner. First pit oh wow, cool. Yeah, first yeah, I mean, well, you have her, I know a lot of people have her like way, way low. What do you have that? I'd have her, yeah, I have her, like, probably pretty low. Um, I don't know. It, it's, I guess, another one where it's a, a kind of difficult to say because they gave her this pretty bizarre edit to give your winner. Uh, right. mm -hmm. Do you like that or do you not? It depends. Uh, yeah. I mean, I like being surprised, especially, you know, most of us can probably sniff out who the winner is, especially when it's, pretty obvious you know a lot of the time so but this was one where it was like uh i don't know they just showed too much negativity of her um yeah yeah, yeah. okay especially yeah when the season's so dominated by one person because like at the time i feel like they weren't trying too hard to divert from um making it like an obvious winner like they do especially nowadays with like 41 and 42 but they really edited heavy towards um, Rob. And I think that, that even even when you rewatch the season knowing Jenna wins, some because sometimes you can rewatch seasons and be like, okay, I'm starting. I see the edit they were at least trying to go for. Um, I really don't get that with this season. I think she's one of the most poorly edited winners, definitely of the early years. 
Yo, for those of you who don't know, I used to be big in the wrestling. In fact, that's how I got my username, which uh, when the, I'll explain one of these days. Oh my god, it is the cringiest thing ever watching Jenna Maraska. I, uh, I forgot who she faced, but it was the cringiest thing ever. It was like voted. It's I think still literally called like the worst wrestling match of all time, legitimately. So not just a, it came in two thousand nine, not just two thousand nine, but of all time. It is hilarious. You guys got to give. It, even not a wrestling fan, it's the cringiest thing you ever watch in your life. Oh my god, uh, that's an interesting way to. And did, I mean, do you have any your comments about uh, Amazon? Touch again. It really is dominated by Rob, right? Which who, I like. Who does she, yeah. Who does she wrestle? I you know um, apparently are you a wrestling fan, Adam? I I was. I was yeah, uh, growing up. Booker, he wrestled Booker Booker T's wife. Oh okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I know you're yeah. talking about yeah on WWE. It no, it's actually in TNA. TNA. Okay. As a nine, yeah, two thousand nine. So. Gotcha. Yeah. We won't spend too much time on that. Just give that a watch. It's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and this is another thing, too. She did want to quit. I mean, she legitimately said, I mean, where she meant it or not, she would pretty much throw in the towel. And ironically enough, that's what, you know, made, I don't know if Heidi was always going over, but I'm sure it didn't hurt the fact that she wanted to quit. So they got rid of Heidi and said at the final five. And then she went on to win the next two media challenges, which you mean, got to give her credit for. She won four muties, which is still tied for the most <laughs> amount. So uh, by a woman. So that's cool. Yeah, can you dig it, sucker? Yeah. <laughs> now the comments talk about wrestling. I just saw oh that God. too. All right. So we would only get off topic of the wrestling. But yeah, I mean, we kind of touched on it. Uh, Rob is just the dominant player this season. He just didn't win, but they didn't hide away from showing it. Season was also spoiled, apparently. That's why Jenna got the edge. Is Rob the best player to never win? That's a good question. I almost, yeah. Other than Sari, I would say, and yeah. maybe Malcolm, that'd be my top three. Yeah, he's up there for me for sure. For yeah, sure, for sure. Was, you might, I think might the be. Suri or uh, Rob, obviously, I think. Yeah, number two. Yeah, definitely number two. Yeah, guys, stream. We got one more season to talk about. This has been Hello. a super fun, super fun uh, stream so far. Again, one last uh, cue. You know, I got to hit that like and subscribe button, even though I'm over Hell's Kitchen YouTuber at this point. Hey, you know, I'll get back to Survivor once the season starts. <laughs> so, you know, it's fun. We're hyped to Survivor 43. And I guess it's only fitting we end with uh, – with Survivor 43 on the horizon. I don't know how I was going to segue about that. But we're going to end with a pretty... Uh, I don't know how I was going to say. We're going to end with a pretty uh, interesting season to talk about. Because, you know, this season is really like watching uh, two different seasons in one. Um, and again, we talked about so many controversial and ambiguous seasons this stream. This is another one. So it's a fitting one we end with season 10 at Survivor Palau at number 21. So let's look at... Russell had this 28... I had this really low, my bottom 10, number 34. Luke had this at number 16. And Adam had this at number 22. So, Luke, uh, what what do you like about this season that puts it in your upper half? Yeah, I just an, – another one I rewatched recently, uh, which makes it sound like I am constantly rewatching seasons. But uh, <laughs> it's like something oh, like five times. Videos, right? uh, yeah, true. Um, uh, yeah, I was, like, so amazed at how much I enjoyed watching this season. There are like so many just absolutely wacky characters. I mean, Karen went from someone who I have like not thought about in like five years to like one of my like favorite survivor characters of all time. Um, who? Sorry. <laughs> Karen. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just like a really fun character driven season. Uh, I like watching uh, Oolong just completely crash and burn. Uh, just watching them get whittled down one by one is great. Stephanie's story is obviously fantastic TV, and Tom is just an all-time great winner. So uh, nothing to dislike for me personally. Okay. All right. Um, well, Russell, you obviously disagree with that. You're obviously a lot lower on this than Luke. Um what do you uh, not like about this season? Your thoughts on the whole? What's your thoughts on the whole like Tom Ian situation? Because that's pretty interesting. What are your thoughts on Survivor Palau? So I'm going to have to agree and to disagree with Luke here. Um, on a first time watch, I think this is like a crazy season to watch. Watching the fall of Oolong episode after episode after episode. But I think the problem comes in on a rewatch. So I will have to rewatch it again soon to see if it still holds up. But I remember maybe two years ago, I did decide to rewatch Palau and I thought it was hard to rewatch Ooh, just yeah. knowing what happens and what, what takes place there with the fall of Oolong. It's almost like I wanted to skip ahead to that merge just because I know Stephanie's going to be that last person standing. Now I don't want to discredit it at all. Stephanie and what she did there became one of the most iconic survivor players ever, even to 
maybe a few years ago, she was still considered one of the top players, most iconic players ever, the most popular female players of all time. Uh, regarding the Ian and Tom thing, I yeah. mean, it's a whole different conversation ranking Survivor Palau as one of an ass season for me, but Tom is one of the best winners of all time, in my opinion. I love okay. Tom. Well, I was going to say, who do you think, so who do you think played the better game, Tom or Ian? Definitely, I, it sounds like definitely Tom to you. They played the games like together the entire season, but okay. I think, I think Tom obviously plays better, and I think it comes down to Ian being too young and Tom being too smart at Survivor and being too good at it. And it's crazy. I'm um, doing a little bit of research afterwards. Tom had never watched Survivor before. His wife oh, was wow. a Survivor fan, and she even knew about the Survivor marooning twist, how sometimes they'll make you keep your suits on and keep your clothes on when you start the season. So she told him a couple times before going out there, honey, wear a swimsuit under your clothes just to make sure. And it turned out this season, it was one of those opening day twists where they have to keep their clothes. And that's why Tom had a swimsuit on the entire, Tom had a swimsuit the entire season. So it's pretty cool how well he was able to navigate the game with never watching it. So speaking of opening day twist, well, I technically this came oh. on day two. Um, so yeah, good segue. And this is the fire question for chat and for you, Adam. So probably in my opinion, the, and this is another thing that really started out this season for me, boy, that opening schoolyard pick, the get rid of Jonathan and poor Wanda is so, so brutal and hard to watch. Man, I almost teared up when she was, uh, they edited it out now, but when I first watched it, uh, seeing that survivor, survivor, boy, that's hard to watch. So my question for you, Chad and Adam, my fire question is, how do you do if roles were reversed? If, um, if uh, what uh, what's her name? Jonathan and Wanda were on the season. How do you think they do? Are they still early boots? If one of them's on Karor, do does Wanda somehow make it? Is in Karen's position maybe, and she makes it to the final five, or she joins that girls' alliance with Stephanie and doesn't turn down like Karen does? How do you think what uh, those two do? That's tough. Um, that's a tough one. I mean, don't have a lot to to base the opinion off for yeah. it. I mean, part of me feels like um, even if like Jonathan goes with like on Tom's tribe, like I just feel like Tom was just so perfect for the season. Um, like based on who like the cast was, it just felt like no matter how it played out, he would have somehow pulled off the win. Um, it's, I actually didn't know that he hadn't watched the show before. Um, that was, that was, that was interesting to hear, but um yeah, I don't know. That's a tough question. It's kind of hard to tell. I do I do just feel like I don't feel like it would have changed the outcome of the season too too much. Um I think it this is the only time that that's happened, right? In Survivor history. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. So but yeah, Tom Tom really controlled uh controlled most of the season. It was cool too because he uh, you could say he kind of dominated the edit a little bit towards the end, but like Upon rewatching it, which I haven't in a couple of years, I did notice that like there were some people that I could see fans gravitating towards. You know, maybe this person has a chance, or maybe Ian has a chance, or Stephanie. Um, it it kind of reminded me a little bit of like a One World or like uh, like One World type season where like Kim clearly was the best player, but I still saw some doors open for other players to win. Uh, kind of like the, it, like not a season like Caramoan where it just seemed at one point like. It was it was dead set on Cochrane, so I I do applaud the uh, the editors for the season, but um, yeah, I do feel like the season is interesting on a on a second watch. I feel like you you learn a lot more in a good or bad um, way on a second watch. I don't know, <laughs> I don't okay. know, I don't know if it's a good or bad way. Yeah, okay, pros and cons, it. pros and cons. Okay, yeah, I, I've always been interesting. Like maybe like I, said, I know I kind of joke about it, but hey, you know if uh, Wanda was they only went to one tribal, if she was on that tribe, she might have been dragged to the end. And who knows if she's in Karen's position instead, she might have just taken that final four deal with the girls. Who knows? Um, and I always been interested in Jonathan, how he do, how he got along as the other alpha male with Tom. Would he be more of a Greg or would he have took an Ian spot? You know, take an Ian spot, but you know, formed a good bond. I've always been so interested. It's so hard to watch that. I mean, it kind of, I, I hate to say it stars my season, the entire season for me, but that is so, so brutal. And just yeah. in general, uh, on the rewatch, this is probably one of the worst seasons to rewatch, if not the worst, because you know what's happening and you, yeah, you can read it that. There's no uh, intrigue. But even on the first watch, I wasn't getting nothing from it because, again, we were losing either like unmemorable players, like who the hell is Ashley, or we were losing like great characters like James. And, you know, 
that really stuck to see over and over again. And even on Karora, what they just tell Willard he goes home, and even they're just so bored. They want to get to the merge and start playing the game and start going people out. But Willard's like, no, I'm done playing. Um, just, just nothing really. Yeah, this is why it's a bottom 10 season for me. Terrible on the rewatch, probably the worst season rewatch. Horrendously awful twist. Um, and just not very fun gameplay. And you know me, I'm a huge gameplay person. You have, again, I love what Tom and Ian did, but earn that. That whole situation is cool. Earn that. Just not getting much from this season. Um, yeah, let's see what the, of course, you do have Stephanie and Tom this season. They're, of course, iconic. Um, Anyway, snake in the grass. Spoiler alert, people. I haven't watched that episode yet. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know. I just clicked on the first thing I saw. Yeah, I heard that's a new thing. Yeah, I mean, the first watch. So, I mean, since we're ending the stream, I guess I never really asked you. I know we kind of touched on, like, rewatches. How does rewatch affect your season? Does it, like, affect your rankings at all? Do you think that's fair? Because, um, like, I, 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 yeah, you got him. So, uh, I, I, I like to say no, but, like, it's kind of hard not to. Right. Um, especially if it's like a, a recent rewatch. Like I said, I haven't rewatched Palau in like four or five years. So it's not as fresh in my in my head. But like, you know, it, it sometimes it's kind of hard not to um to base that in your uh in your rankings. Yeah, and that's, that's let's talk about one of the best seasons of all time, Survivor Edge of Extinction. On a first time viewing, that season's yeah. not good to watch, but when you can binge through everything, get right to the good parts, it's a good season. The good yeah. parts. Let's not get into that again. Uh, end awesome. credits <laughs> yeah. at the end of so the finale when they credits. So what about you, Luke? Yeah, I mean the the week to week and then watching like eight right. episodes on yeah. your couch is in a row is a completely different experience. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't try to hold some like pure view of like this is how I felt when I first watched it live. Uh, for me, it's like I mean, am I entertained right now? Like, uh, how does it play if I put you know, week to week, or if I put it on and watch the whole thing in an afternoon. So it's just, is it entertaining or not? I guess is how it works for me. Yeah. And like, sometimes I feel bad about it because, you know, how much should I like combine when I first enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it to when I rewatched it. So, and some seasons, like you said, I rewatched a long time ago, just rewatched like a year or two ago, but you know, it's this one of those interesting things. And again, with the season like Palau this season, I, again, is in my opinion, easily like the, other than like terrible seasons, like probably could see like the biggest drop for when you first watch it. Again, I didn't even enjoy it the first watch, but I see plenty of people. I know this was really loved back then. And, you know, people have really kind of started mm -hmm. it again after rewatch, especially knowing what happens, knowing the intrigue is over. So I feel like this is a perfect case of why you need to rewatch a season or not rewatch a season in that case. Um, But yeah, any other thoughts about Survivor Palau? Again, it's, uh, it's a very, it's a unique season. We'll say that, you know, I'll probably never do a season like that. I do think the final challenge is, probably one of my personal favorite moments oh, yeah. like in the history of the show to be honest it's sad we'll never see why. that again yeah 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 broke it yeah. yeah and i All think right. like uh, people always wondered like what would happen if it was just you on a tribe and um yeah it was like one of those things like what, what would happen moments and like it actually did happen so yeah there's uh definitely some i, I think this is, there's a lot of pros and cons for palau but all righty so yeah, any other words on Palau? Yeah, that's pretty much what I agree. Pros and cons, more cons for me, but definitely an interesting season. Season mm -hmm. we'll never get. All right, so that is it. Let's go through one more time. If you guys have anything you want to say real quickly about the season we discussed about, go for it. And for you stream, if you missed it, at number 31, we had Survivor 41. At number 30, we had Game Changers. At 29, we had Africa. At number 28, we had Marquesas. At 27, Edge of Extinction, 20, 26, HHH, 25, Gabon, 24, All-Stars, 23, Outback, 22, Amazon, and, of course, 21, Palau. Is there anything that you didn't get a chance to discuss that you guys want to talk about those seasons? All-Stars should be higher. All -stars, yeah, I was going to see. What are you guys most surprised about? I'm surprised that 41 is that low. Uh, yeah. I think it is just a lot better than – or at least marginally better than a lot of the seasons that we've talked about. So that was the biggest surprise for me because the rest were kind of expected for me, but 41 really low was uh, surprising. Honestly, I'm surprised we didn't talk about uh, Borneo today. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. I'm surprised Edge was so high. <laughs> Boy, you're not going to let that go, eh? <laughs> We yeah, you know, I literally have in my notes. I'm surprised we did talk about the Edge today. Gabe, I thought it'd be Gabe Ruiz. Gabe Ruiz I'm, agrees with me. 
I'm surprised Cook Islands wasn't down here. Uh, I did my best to tank its ratings, but I guess I didn't try hard enough. Uh, I should have cooked the book and it <laughs> put it on the bottom. So that's a good segue. You guys are being good segues for today. I appreciate that. What's um, So cool. obviously, me and Russ are going to be on all of these two podcasts for chat. You don't know. Next podcast three will be on uh, Russell's channel. So Adam, Luke, this is your chance now to talk about a season that you guys aren't going to talk about, whether it was last podcast or future podcast coming up. This is your chance to talk about a season, um, defend it now while you still can, or really hate it, hate against it, because um, you guys obviously know the rankings as well. So, Luke, I'll start with you. What uh, What's the season you want to defend, hate, both? Yeah, I, I am just hoping personally that Vanuatu cracks the top 10. Uh, I think it is, or, or at least top 15. For me, it is, like, such a great season. Um, and it is... Uh, it's interesting how you can have like the same like men versus women twist and uh, it can play out completely differently. Like it's actually like a mature, well, like st a mature story. Um, Chris is an all time great winner. Amy's a great villain. So uh, yeah, I, I, I want to see Vanuatu go all the way. All right, Adam, what do you, what do you have to say? I, I love Cook Islands. Cook Islands has always kind of been like, uh, like a, I don't say guilty pleasure because I feel like it's somewhat of a popular season, right? Maybe not like most people's top tens, but um, I just think it has a, a legendary, legendary cast, like some all time greats. And like the story of the season, like I feel like it's one of those seasons that like kind of is the opposite of Palau. I feel like the more times you watch Cook Islands, the better. OK, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, so one thing, one of the main things, like I said, at a, that inspired this YouTube rankings because I always wanted to see how uh, the YouTubers uh, uh, rankings would compare to the Rob has a podcast rankings, which yes, they're hardcore fans, but also, you know, we not, not maybe as hardcore as us YouTubers who do this stuff, you know, for uh, spend pro probably far too much time on survivor. Right. So um, I've always kind of been interested to compare those rankings. Um, so at number 31 for Rob has a podcast, we were pretty much dead on with that. At number 31 is game changers. At number 30 is fans versus favorites. So they're a little higher on that. They are also higher on this. At number 29 for Wait, the, the first fan versus favorites or? Oh, my bad. Uh, 26. Yeah. Karen Mullen. Oh, okay. Yeah. My bad. Okay. Yeah. My bad. My bad. Yeah. I just assumed, yeah, when I looked at it, I assumed you guys knew what I meant. My bad. Luke um, almost freaked out there. Yeah. yeah. I was like, whoa, that is <laughs> yeah, offensive. <laughs> Taking it back. <laughs> at number 29 was South Pacific, which I definitely agree that they're a little higher on that than ours. Um, at number 28, they had Fiji, which probably. Surprises Russell. I know pisses him off. Um, at number 27. Yeah, so way higher than you. At number 27, they had Guatemala. 26, Gabon. They pretty much agree with that. So that. Uh, season we haven't touched on yet. At 25, they had Samoa. 24, we are dead on here. They had uh, All-Stars. At number 23, they had Vanuatu. So yeah, I agree with you, Luke. Way too long, Vanuatu were the casuals. At number 20, they did, did, they did get this right. Again, I'm so disappointed. At 22, they had Marquesas. Again, I would have it higher, obviously, but um, definitely, I think we had it too low. And the rounded out, they had tw uh, Africa at 21. So it definitely seems that Rob, have, Rob has a podcast. People are a lot more harsher to seasons like Edge, Ghost Island, HHH, stuff with controversial seasons, while we are more, uh, gave it a little more of a uh, wiggle room. But yeah, that's the comparison um, to it. So yeah. Uh, when did other... they have Edge of Extinction? Do you know? Do you have it in front of you? I'm just, I have to. It was like, it was really low, right, Russ? Like 35 Good. or something? Yeah, they had it bottom it five. I'll pull it up right now. Was it bottom five? Wow. Uh, bottom five is a bit high. but <laughs> They had it – so this was uh, before season 41, so they only ranked 40 seasons. They had it 36 out of 40, so there you go. Four oh, spots yeah. Oh, too wow, high. you're right. That's crazy, yeah. Two, wow. Three. And that's, again, that's why I feel like it's just too much, you know, biases, you know, where I think we're able to kind of look past that stuff. But anyway, this yeah. was a fun, fun podcast uh, talk about the season. Yeah. Um, yeah, any guys, because um, again, me and Russell, of course, will be back next week. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel, like and subscribe to Russell's channel to be on next week. Uh, next week, we got Once Upon Island. And uh, who else we got, Russell? I'm drawing a blank. The Nullified Take. That's embarrassing. I'm sorry, Nullified Take. I'm surprised. Sorry. We got him on next week for that. Um, Luke, uh, what you got on your channel coming up? Yeah, I, uh, I, I got some fun stuff coming up. I'm doing a video uh, ranking all the themes on Sunday. So this was great because we had a lot of tribal themes. Um, so uh, yeah, it'll, that'll be fun. Um, but just, yeah, back to regular Survivor content. So um, yeah, excited for talk about 43. So everyone come subscribe, please. 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Again, obviously, I'm sure you guys know Luke by now makes awesome content, very unique content. And Adam, what about you? What's coming on Survivor Buffs? What do you got going on in general? Yeah, check us out if you don't already. It's Survivor Buffs. It's uh, me and my, uh, Gideon. Uh, he couldn't be here tonight. I guess drama students graduate um, in September. This is like finals for him right now. So he's pretty busy. But um, yeah, we uh, two years ago or a year ago, two seasons ago, we did uh, a tier rank of every season and every winner. So now with 41 and 42 over, we're kind of going to update our list. Uh, we have some Survivor Season 42 uh, post-game interviews, about half the cast we got interviews with. So those will be coming up. Um, and get some past contestants to come on and talk about 43 and um, yeah, looking forward to 43. It should be a good season. For sure. For sure. Uh, Russ, anything to say to close us out or uh... um, my next video guys on Tuesday, I'm going to be yeah. uh, just reacting to all the pregame press we have for the season 43 cast. So that'll be fun to do. Yeah. Like I said, guys, hyper 43, still got two more, two podcasts down, two more to go. Uh, top 20 seasons coming up next. So again, Make sure to subscribe one more time. It will not be on my channel. It'll be on Russell's channel. So, again, make sure to sub and look forward to us uh, again this time next Friday at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be fun, just like this was fun. Any last words, guys, uh, before we head off? Almost at the two-hour mark. Fun two hours. Thanks for having me. It was, very, yeah. it was super fun. Thanks for having me as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks so much, chat, for watching. And peace out, and we'll see you next week.